October football arrives at Lavelle Edwards Stadium, and it's rivalry night as the Cougars welcome the Aggies of Utah State. It's the 88th meeting in a series that began in 1922, and it's right now on BYU TV. After four days of storms, this is what we're left with tonight. Perfect conditions. That's from the Y on Y Mountain as we bring you down into Lavelle Edwards Stadium in the valley below for BYU and Utah State. Hey, everybody. I'm Dave McCann with Blaine Fowler. We've called a lot of these games over the years. There's something special about this one tonight. And it's a gorgeous night and two teams coming in with questions yeah. about themselves. And they prepared very differently in the month of September. Utah State playing a schedule where they just roll. Right. One of the top offensive teams in the country through the first month of the season. And BYU comes in battle-tested, playing on the road against top 10 type programs. And BYU thinks, hey, we're better prepared because we've been battle-tested. Utah State saying, we're confident coming in here. So who's really good? We're going to find out tonight. That puts a lot of pressure on our impact players, the two quarterbacks. For Utah State, Jordan Love, high-flying offense, averaging over 50 points a game, fourth best in the entire country. What makes him good? Well, he is a good decision maker, and he gets the ball out quickly. He's very accurate, and he has beautiful touch on deep throws. He's a complete player, just almost 67% completion percentage, 265 yards a game, passing five touchdowns, three interceptions. He's got to be really sharp and take care of the football if they're going to continue this offensive prowess they've had for the first month of the season. His first start in this big rivalry. He did not face Tanner Megan last year. Tanner was out injured. He is healthy here in October, Blaine. What do you expect from number 12? Well, he's coming off of a very efficient game, 18 of 21, 160 yards against what you could argue is the best secondary in the country at Washington. I thought Tanner was really good last week. 62% completions on the season. This is a big test for him. This is a game in which he should be able to get the ball upfield a little bit more. This isn't Washington's defense he's facing tonight. He's already making nice with the officials. That's a good sign for BYU. The keys to tonight's game are presented by Tim Daly, Nissan. Let's start with the Aggies. They need to stop BYU's run game. I'm talking about hold them to less than four yards per carry. And if they can hold them under 100 yards, then they've got a great chance to win. And then positive turnover margin. You go on the road in a big game environment, you can't be negative in the turnover margin. That's what they're fighting for, the old wagon wheel. How about the keys for BYU? Well, BYU's got to control the line of scrimmage, which they've done in all of their victories this year, where they dominate up front on both sides of the football. they got to be able to run it and dominate up front. And then they've got to limit Utah State chunk plays. This is a team in their run offense in the Aggies that they'll get one yard and then minus two yards and then one yard. And the next thing you know, they go 60 yards for a touchdown on a big run play. No big chunk plays and BYU has a great chance to win. Those are the keys brought to you by Tim Daly Auto Group serving Utah since 1968. It is Friday night, General Conference weekend, and here come the Cougars. Three and two on the year. That big win at then number six, Wisconsin. Disappointing loss last week at number 11, Washington. But what a September schedule for BYU. And the Aggies taking the field. Best start since 2012 at three and one. Matt Wells is six and zero after a bye week, Blaine, and he had a bye week last week. Well, and he talked this week about how much he appreciated the opportunity to work on all the different sets and formations that BYU presents offensively. They, they liked having that bye week coming into this game. Kalani Sataki, his third year at BYU back in 1994. Those two clashed against each other as players for their respective schools. We'll show you highlights of that later on tonight. Utah State won the toss. They defer to the second half, so they want to put BYU's offense out on the field as we begin the game. And the Aggie defense will be tested. They have not been very good. Their offense has been awesome. But to get their defense out there, and BYU will take some swings at it. When you defer, what you hope is is that you can immediately get a field position advantage. You pin your opponent down, you get a three and out, you get the ball, and you have a short field to start with. That's the hope for Utah State here. 88th meeting tonight between BYU and Utah State. 
The Aggies actually are the very first opponent BYU ever played in football on October 7th, 1922. BYU leads the overall series. They've been dominant here at home. They have won 25 of the last 29, but the last few have been nail riders, and that's changed the feeling of this rivalry. Our opening kickoff is brought to you by Les Olson Company, your office technology partner. Aleva Hifo is deep for BYU. Dominic Eberly has it on the tee for Utah State. Cougars and Aggies. Did September prepare these two teams for October? We're about to find out. Hifo puts a knee down, and BYU will start from the 25-yard line. Tanner Mangum, 18 of 21 last week, as you mentioned, against one of the best secondaries in the country. What do you want to see out of Tanner here early on in this first quarter tonight? I think for Tanner's sake, if they can run the ball early, that helps them. And then that opens up that intermediate pass game. I think against this Utah State team, they're so good offensively. You have to match them a little bit on offense, and you've got to push the ball up the field a little bit. Matt Wells is 2-5 and five on natural grass. So he's unbeatable coming off a bye, but he struggles on natural grass, and that's the surface tonight. Shotgun formation for Mango. Katoa gets the start, moves out of the backfield. Throwing situation on first down. And freshman Dax Milne out of Bingham High School is across the 30. He's got eight yards and second down and two. Third man shift, Blaine. And it looks like they were going to see what Utah State gave defensively and then shifted. Katoa gets hammered, but picks up the first down across the 35 to the 36. A gain of three. Gage Ferguson, a senior out of Mendon, Utah, went to Mountain Crest High School. He delivers the hit on Katoa. And Gage Ferguson, a very physical player, and he's the leader back in that secondary. You watch him. He's making the calls. He's getting guys lined up. He plays with a little bit of an edge to him. And you saw what he can do coming up in the run. That was a big-time hit. Lots of local kids in action tonight. Katoa out of American Fork High School. First and 10, BYU at the 36. This is Katoa again. Looking around that right tackle spot. Picks up maybe three. Second down and seven. It's a big offensive line blame, but it's a young one for BYU. They've won one game this year. They started three freshmen, a sophomore, and a senior. Typically, it's two freshmen. Uh, uh, sophomore and two seniors, but uh, I'm telling you, it, it, it's a very talented young group up front that's going to just do nothing but get better over the next couple of years. Squally Canada with it running back. Powell in motion. This is Squally right up the middle. Maggie's were waiting for him. A gain of two. Canada last year in Logan, 12 carries for 69 yards. But that game got away from BYU because of turnover. Seven, in fact. The Aggies cashed him in for 26 points. Tanner Mangum didn't play. He was hurt. Bo Hodge got knocked out of the game in the second quarter. And walk-on Coy Detmer Jr. came in and got overwhelmed on a big defensive night for Utah State. Third down and five. Every third down is big in this matchup. Milne in motion. Mangum looks over to the sideline, and he'll change the call. Play clock's at three. Tanner throws high for Shumway, and incomplete. Jamarcus Ingram on the coverage, a flag is down. And then I think it's been picked up. Well, let's see. Yep. If there was a flag down, it's been picked back up. The punting unit is on for BYU. Red Almond will kick it away, and Jordan Nathan is back deep for Utah State. Nathan had a 59-yard punt return for a touchdown against Tennessee Tech. A little stutter step, and a good boot by Almond. Bounces at the 14. It'll roll inside the 10. Beautiful punt by Red Allman, 51 yards. And for Allman, second longest punt on the year. And now comes Utah State and this fast break offense. They spread you out and, and they get you running from sideline to sideline. Then they hit you with the run game almost as a change up. And it's been, it's been a big play offense, but it's been a big play offense in the run game. Seems like their long touchdowns are long touchdown runs this season. 
Darwin Thompson in the backfield with Love. Thompson comes in averaging nine and a half yards a carry. He'll get a carry on first down. Shelton there waiting for him and knocks him down at the 10. Gain of two for Thompson. Michael Shelton, a senior out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Elisi Tuiaki, the defensive coordinator. What did he see against Washington that he does not want to see here tonight? Well, they did not play physical enough on the edges against Washington. They've got to be much better in this one. Pass complete to Jalen Green for seven yards. It'll be third down and short. Sione Taki Taki on the tackle. There's some Aggie fans in the house. It is a spirited atmosphere. It's third down and one. Love looks over to his sideline. Thompson in the backfield. Quinn Ficklin to center, former BYU player. And they'll run it on third and short. And it looks to be enough, but a flag comes in. Taku Taku hit Thompson. Needed a yard, picked up two. But a flag came in near the line of scrimmage. Illegal formation. Five players in the backfield. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Three play third down. That changes third and one to third and six. Yeah, you, your receivers have to know when you're shifting and moving in all these different formations when they're supposed to be on the line of scrimmage and when they're not. You have to have seven guys on the line of scrimmage. You can only have four in the backfield. And, and, uh, and here you, you can see they only had six on the line of scrimmage. Now it's third and six. Love looks back over to his offense. To Coaches on the sideline. Moves up under center. And now backs into the shotgun. Redshirt sophomore out of Bakersfield, California. On third and six. Pocket holds up nicely. Pass is complete. The Cougars are there. And Thompson steps out of bounds. Gain of a yard. And now the Aggies will punt from their goal line. Zane Anderson. Boy, was he missed last week. Against a team like Washington with so much team speed on offense, you need a guy that can cover in space. Zane Anderson's as good as any defensive back at, at coverage in the pass game at outside linebacker, and so they really missed him last week. And glad to have him back against a really good offense this week. Taylor Heinze going to kick it away. Shelton fields it at the 44. Now looks for some help into Aggie territory at the 48. Good field position for BYU, a 43-yard punt for Hintze out of Alta High School. Be with us on Monday at 1 Eastern for the Coordinator's Corner. Jeff Grimes, Eliza Tuiaki, and Ed Lamb hook up with Greg Rubel Monday 1 Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. They'll review tonight and look ahead to next Saturday night against Hawaii here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Dave McCann, Blaine Fowler, Lauren McLean, second offensive possession for BYU. What'd they learn on the first one? Well, they they gained yardage on the exchange of punts, and that's what you want to do. Sometimes it's it's just a field position battle as teams feel themselves out and feel out the opponent in the first quarter. They, they gained about 25 yards on the exchange of punts this time, and now BYU has what you would consider a short field, 48 yards to go to get into the end zone. Katoa and El Bakri in the backfield as Mangum goes to work from the shotgun at the 48-yard line. Polly in motion. Mangum waits for Katoa. The Aggies were waiting for him, too, and he was dropped for a two-yard loss. Beautiful tackle by Chase Christiansen out of Stansbury High School in Stansbury, Utah. Lauren. I asked Kalani Satake how the offense needs to start fast, something that they've struggled with this season. And he said the key is to minimize turnovers and take care of the football. However, they can't take care of it so much that they don't take some necessary risks to make big plays. He said there's a balance between being aggressive and conservative at the same time. Dave. Thanks, Lauren. Loss of two, second down and 12, right at the 50. Now Mangan looks over the Aggie defense, calls an audible. And they'll run it to Katoa. Gets the yards that he lost on this play previous. And now it's third down and 10. 
this, the strength of this Aggie defense is, is that front seven. In particular, those two inside backers, Woodward and Christiansen, are very active. They run to the football. You saw on the previous play, a screenplay, Christiansen read it so quickly that BYU couldn't even get a hand on him to block him. Third down and ten. Matt Bushman had a big third down play last week. Freshman All-American tight end number 89. Magnum looks things over. And on third and ten, he's back to throw it. Micah Simon. Simon has first down yardage inside the 40. It'll depend on the spot. Needed to get to the 38. Shaq Bond made the tackle. But Simon, with his fourth catch of the year, right over the middle. Shaq Bond with his 21st tackle. This is a pretty good stick in the open field to come up and make it even close. And so BYU's going to have fourth down. Rally into the football. Squally Canada is in. The Cougars will go for it. And you see Fessy Satake talking to him and saying, you know what, you got to get it straight up the field to get first down. When he went lateral, um, he was able to be stopped short of that first down. Fourth down the yard. Play clock winding down, and BYU calls a timeout to avoid the penalty. 7.48 to go here in this opening quarter. And no score. Biggest play of the young game is coming up. BYU football on BYU TV is brought to you by Brady Industries. Honestly better. Deseret First Credit Union. Your values, your timeline, your financial future. Tim Daly Nissan. Tim Daly Auto Group. Serving Utah since 1968. And by Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward. The Joseph F. Smith Humanities Building on campus. Tell you, Blaine, nothing good ever happened to you and me inside the Humanities Building. I, I'm trying to remember what class I had. But we were American the, Heritage, oh, I think I had. Yeah. Well, and then all the artistic stuff yeah, I just was like, in there. Spent a lifetime in there. Some we'll of my general education classes were in there, and that was not an easy. After the time, <laughs> it's fourth down and one. We talked about trench warfare. BYU's front group against this front group from Utah State. El Bakri's the fullback. And Canada, as Hifo goes in motion. Fourth down and a yard. Play action. Mangum's going to throw it, and it's picked off. Intercepted. Naleai. Is taking it in. Touchdown, Utah State. 55 yards. Our uh, Blaine coming out of that, in that timeout, we said, are they going to come out and throw it? Are they just going to run it? We mentioned if they can't run it for a yard against Utah State, we thought they would go right here with the run play, and then Tannery is picked off. Well, and not... Naliai, he, he was in a good position. He knew he couldn't get to the quarterback, so he just stopped up. And Tanner Mangum tried to throw it right through him as if he didn't even see him. He had a wide open receiver for a first down in El Bakri and just threw it right through Naliai. Lightning strikes for the Aggie defense again. Dominic Eberle for the extra point. He's 71 of 71 in his career. And Utah State leads 7 to nothing. He's changed quickly. Fourth down and one, BYU in Aggie territory, and it's an Aggie touchdown. And we see what these teams have done in the opening quarter this season, and this has been a big quarter for Utah State. 54 points on the year. They've had a good second quarter as well. But Tanner Mangum with an enormous mistake. And, and Naliai has been a beast for this football team, mostly in, in the pass rush department. Where when he's coming off the edge, he, he has just been impossible to block. And on this one, BYU didn't even attempt to block him, but Mangum has to be aware of where he is and throw around or pump fake or do something. Um, and you know what? Great hands by Naliai. Eight turnovers and 33 points now in the last five quarters between BYU and Utah State. That's what the Aggie defense has done to the Cougars as Hefo puts a knee down and will go again from the 25. The TCU graduate, boy, has he come in. Uh, the TCU transfer, boy, has he come in and really made a difference for this defense. Yeah, 24 tackles, seven tackles for loss, four and a half sacks, and this 
probably the biggest play of the season. Just a phenomenal read. Understood that he couldn't get to the quarterback, so he stopped up and got in a position to get in the throwing lane. Certainly never expected the ball to be thrown right to him, but made a great catch and a great play to get it in the end zone. Here we go, first and 10 from the 25. And come back in under center. Simon gets it on the jet sweep. Got it a little bit late. Slides around the corner for two, maybe three. And it'll be second down. Midway through the opening quarter, seven to nothing, Utah State. Ferguson on the stop. Didn't that, that jet sweep was just a step behind, wasn't it? Seems like he got it late, so he had to hesitate. And, and for Utah State to defend that, they're going to have to be hard on the edges, and those inside backers are going to have to run the alley inside out to stop that. Davis at the bottom of your screen. Second down and seven. Simon in motion out of backfield. Shotgun for Mangum. Nice pocket. Throws a strike. Good for maybe just a yard. Christiansen. Solid tackle. Drops Hefo for a short game. And another third down coming for BYU. You're going to see Chase Christiansen just running from sideline to sideline. Number two on this team and tackles right behind his other inside linebacker running mate, Woodward. He's got 31 tackles this season. And that's for a guy from the inside to get to the sideline and close on the football like that. It's a pretty impressive play. Third down and six. Katoa in the backfield with Mangum. Aggie defense playing with a little more confidence after that turnover, and Katoa's going to run it on third down. He's got nowhere to go. The crowd not happy with that play call as some boos come down. A gain of a yard on third and six, and BYU will punt it away. And, and Utah State on that play basically saying, we double dog Derry to try to throw it over the top of us on third and, and five or six here because we're going to play press coverage. Our safeties are going to be tight. And if you can throw it over the top, go ahead. But we, we think we're better than you. And they, they basically challenged BYU, and BYU ran the football out. Almond had a 51-yarder a moment ago. Nathan is deep. Fair catch called for at the, at the 29. And that's where the Aggies will take it over. From the 29, up by 7. 5.33 to go here in the first. Join us Tuesday night at 8 Eastern. BYU football with head coach Kalani Sutaki and Greg Rebell. Visit together, a player joins, an assistant coach. Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern on BYU TV, BYU Radio, and all the apps right after, after further review. BYU trying to get that thing back, the old wagon wheel. It goes to the winner, and it has belonged to the Aggies. In his last season, they beat BYU 40-26 to in Logan. Second offensive possession for Utah State. This starts at the 29. Aggies up by seven after the interception return for a touchdown. Love over the middle. Hits his big tight end. Dax Raymond, a state champion from just up the road at Tempview High School, gets seven yards on his 16th catch of the year. He has been a big-time performer for them. Now the Aggies will run it. Slicing through is Darwin Thompson. First down yardage to the 41. You remember Raymond was coming out at a time when BYU, with the spread offense, wasn't really recruiting tight ends at all. And he ends up up in Logan. I think it, in this offense that BYU runs now, they'd be very interested in Raymond coming out of Tim Love with all day to throw. Downfield had a man with a step, but seemed complete. Intended for Aaron Vaughns. He'll be second down and 10. More on Dax. So his church mission to Russia. 90 players on these combined rosters have served two-year church missions. A lot of languages down on the field for yes. sure. Second down. All the receivers spread out. Thompson in the backfield. And Thompson will get it. Hadley get a piece of him. Gang tackled after a pickup of four. It'll be third down and six. We saw Hadley running the football a couple of games ago. He's been back and forth. Was on defense, went to offense, now back to defense. Makes that tackle. Third down.
That's Raymond in motion. He'll get out in his position. From the shotgun. Over the middle, complete in the BYU territory, and a first down. That's Jalen Green. Well, you see how fast Jordan Love gets rid of the football. 13 yards and a first down. And Jalen Green made a great adjustment on the ball. He got that's his 13th reception ball thrown behind him. And now Love flips it out to his receiver. Ron Quavian Tarver, one of the big play men. This Aggie attack, a gain of four. Second and six. Utah State wanting to pick up the pace a little bit. Love has three interceptions on the year. Thompson, round outside. Flag comes down as he goes down. Tripped up by Austin Lee. Going to be a hold, most likely, against the Aggies. Illegal block in the back. Number one, offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Three plays, second down. Ron Quavey and Tarver with the penalty. He was coming from outside in, and um, and, and you can see right there, I could you could have called whatever one because he also wrapped his arms around him. So it could have been a block in the back, a hold. The, the line judge threw the flag, and that'll come back. Ball now all the way back to the 49. Gerald Bright is in the game. Receiver last year moved to running back this year, averages 7.2 yards a carry. Second down and 16 for the Aggies. Love lobs it to his tight end. Another enormous play inside the 10-yard line. Zane Anderson saves a touchdown. Carson Terrell out of Lehigh with a big play of 45 yards for Utah State. How about the touch by Love on that? He had to get it off quick and put enough air on it for his tight end to run under. BYU wasn't even set on that play. Utah State going right to work. Short game. And Bright out of Pensacola, Florida. BYU's in a really flat defensive alignment. Think and run. And they fake the play action, hold BYU's backers and safeties, and get it over the top to the tight end. Now it's Thompson in the backfield. Second down. Second goal for Utah State. Love to the end zone. Throws it over Carver's head. And incomplete. That'll bring up third down. Utah State has 17 rushing touchdowns on the year. We're looking at all their points. If we look at the receivers, go where are the touchdowns, the running backs. Well, as have. much as they throw the football, you would think that they'd have a bunch of touchdown passes. But it's it's been in the run game where they've scored, and sometimes from great distance where they've had big long run plays. Third down. Student section making some noise. Jordan Love's looking right into him. Third and goal from the seven. Back to pass. Rolls to his right. Has some room. He has two rushing touchdowns on a year, but he's denied here as he's tackled at the two. Gain of five. Anderson up to hit him. His helmet came flying off. And it'll be fourth down and goal from there. And and with his helmet coming off, he has to come out of play. And that may play into the decision of whether or not to go for it or kick a field goal. Big hit on the end of that one by Kafusi. There's the helmet off. Eberly hasn't missed this season. Eight for eight kicking field goals. And a timeout called by Utah State. This will be a chip shot, 19 yards. Everly 8 for 8, number one in the NCAA. Quite the weapon on special teams. But how about Jordan Love and that drive to get down the field? A couple of really good plays on there. One, a ball thrown behind the receiver, Jalen Green, who pirouettes around and catches the ball and gets a, a critical first down. And then 
the play action pass where BYU just blows the coverage, allows the tight end to run free behind the secondary, and, and that gets him down here in scoring position. Now, I'm wondering if Utah State is using a timeout right now to be able to get Jordan Love back in the game um, to, to go for this here now on fourth down. Your Cougar Sports day-to-day play-by-play is on BYU Sports Nation. Spencer Linton, Jared Jordan. Monday through Friday at noon Eastern time on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Tomorrow morning, you can see him at 11 o'clock Eastern, 9 Mountain Time on BYU TV and BYU Radio. You think they're thinking about going for it, Blaine, on fourth and two? Yeah. They got a funny angle for a field goal. Believe it or not, that field goal is probably tougher than if you were back 10 yards and not as severe an angle. And so... They're they're, sending love they, back they, out they there. use the timeout to get love back in the game where his helmet came off and they're going to go for it on fourth and two. So love back in the game after the timeout. And it is fourth down and goal from the two. Crowd comes to life. Those are the Aggie fans with high hopes. Play clock is winding down. It's a three. Love will run it up the middle, but there is a whistle and a timeout called by Utah State, a second timeout. And Matt Wells ran down the sideline to call a timeout in fear Turn of out. Utah State. A delay of game. I wonder if he's thinking about the field goal team. Now. Well, and, and think about it. They were disorganized, and and he probably felt like, wait a minute, the play that we want to run is not going to get run properly, and I'm not going to waste a fourth down attempt here. So he ran down and called the timeout. Now, they end up scoring, but you don't know whether they would have or not because they started blowing whistles, you know, before the snap of the football. So if you relax it, you have to wonder, though, if he just lets it go if they score the touchdown. Right. Well, he thought about it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he called the timeout because he didn't like the play. He called the timeout because he felt like his offense wasn't ready to go. They were disorganized, and Love was starting to try to rush to get the playoff before the clock went down. He didn't like that setup. A stop here will be the equivalent of a turnover. Fourth down and goal from the two-yard line. Love's in the shotgun. Right in motion. Love keeps it, rolls to his right. Looks around, throws it back to Bright. Touchdown! Beautiful play call and a great sell by the quarterback. And Gerald Bright was wide open for his first receiving touchdown of the year. They made that look easy. So Bright came, faked the fly sweep. Love rolled to his right. The plan all along was for Bright to get the ball on the throwback. They're putting all of their hope that BYU would bite and not play disciplined defense, and they were right on. Two plays in this drive for BYU's defense were their completely blown coverages. Everly on for the extra point. 14 to nothing. The Aggies have quieted the crowd here in the first quarter. A minute 50 to go. And it's a two-touchdown advantage for Utah State. And this is the last thing BYU hoped would happen. Come out and get in a deficit with some very difficult uh, decisions on defense and offense that just haven't flat worked. Well, 12 plays on that scoring drive, 71 yards, just 343. Some big plays yeah. in that drive made by the quarterback, Jordan Love. Good throws. That scoring summary presented by Deseret First Credit Union. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future. Everly will kick it off again, and Hefo is back deep for BYU. So far, the plan for Utah State has been just to kick it into the end zone, eliminate the return. He's kicked the previous ones five yards deep, and Hefo hasn't brought anything out yet. Here comes another one. This one out of bounds through the end zone. And the Cougars have it at the 25-yard line. Now pressure is mounting on this offense to do something. 
And the pressure falls right on to number 12. Yes, it does. And, and this offense feels additional pressure because one of the two touchdowns in this football game, the offense gave up on a pick six. The team with the fewest turnovers has won 14 of the last 19 games. BYU with a turnover that the Aggies took in for a touchdown. From the 25, Cougars started up again. Here's Hefo. Hit hard up near the 29, a gain of four. Woodward and Ingram on the tackle. You mentioned earlier, Dave, so Utah State's had two full weeks to look at this fly sweep, to talk about how to defend it, to add some new plays to their offense that BYU hasn't seen. BYU's playing on a short week and coming off of a road trip against a top 10 football team. It's a little different preparation. Three yards on that jet sweep, second down and seven. Manga, nice pocket over the middle. Bushman, first down across the 40. Spot down at the 42, 14 yards to the sophomore out of Tucson. Seventh catch of the year for Matt Bushman. Matt Bushman starting on the right, running a crossing route, and as soon as he clears the inside linebacker, Tanner Mangum throws the ball in that little hole in the defense. Good timing, good throw. Canada in the backfield for Mangum. And the Cougars at the 42. Aggies threaten blitz. And Tanner checks out of the play. Another run squally. Could have checked out of that. Dropped in the backfield. Glad we talked about the up front guys for Utah State and the battle with BYU's offensive linemen. And so far, it's been to the advantage of the defense. And it hasn't been, again, this is more like Cal. That's a free player. That's not somebody getting beat physically at the line of scrimmage. That's somebody not being blocked at all. So that's a missed assignment. And that's been a theme in this game on both sides of the ball. Defense, missed assignments, easy plays. Uh, and th there's a play where you just don't block a defensive player, and it's an easy play for the defense. John Trell Rockamore, McKinney, Texas, making a play. End of the first quarter, and it's been a good one for the Aggies out of Logan. A defensive touchdown and an offensive touchdown, 14 nothing here on BYU TV. October football begins, and we get ready to start the second quarter. And Blaine, what we learned from September is when BYU can't run the football, this offense just is not very good, and we've seen that through first quarter tonight. Well, eight rushes, just 14 yards to show for those eight rushing attempts. And Utah State, they're challenging BYU. They're getting up on the line of scrimmage and basically saying, you know what, you're, you're going to have to throw it on us because we're going to look the line of scrimmage. You have to prove to us you can throw. Gage Ferguson setting the tone with a big time hit to start that off on, on Katoa. And they've just been swarming to the football, putting more people up front than BYU can block. And that's giving BYU problems. And then the picks, the pick six with Nalei, who gets in the passing lane. And Tanner Mangan throws it right to him, right into his face, picks it up and runs it back for six. And so even though Utah State only had the ball for just under six minutes in that first quarter, they've got 14 points to show, seven on the defensive side of the ledger and seven on offense on a beautiful drive. Second quarter begins with BYU looking at second and 14. Mangum drops it off to Holker, falls out and out of bounds. Did the Aggies grab it in time? Waiting for the signal from the official, and he says, no, he did not. Dallin Holker, freshman out of Lehigh, loses two yards and the football. David Woodward up to knock it out. You see Woodward got a hand Ooh. right on the football. They may want to take a look at that. The official right there said BYU got it back. It'll be third and 16 if it holds up. I'm surprised Utah State's not challenging, and maybe they will. The Aggies are quite confident that they got the ball. The ruling in a previous play of a fumble out of bounds is under further review. It's kind of a plug for our Tuesday night show after further review. That's right. He only says after further review 
once they've done the review. Right, he'll come back and, and then he'll pub our show. Let's review it as well. And it looked to me initially, Blaine, that Utah State got on they, it before they, they, going out. They recovered it. The question is, did they recover it before it got to the sideline? And Holker's got to tuck that thing away. It's smacked down. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, from that angle, I mean, you can't tell, but it looks like, okay, here he is. I say he's in. I say he has. I think he's recovered it. He was on the football, had control of the football. His arm and shoulder and hip were all on the ground. I think that's going to get reversed, and Utah State's going to get a, a short field. That's Chase Christiansen, 10 tackles against BYU last year, a career high. And a chance for the senior to come up with a big turnover as BYU has self-destructed here in the first half. Cougars turned the ball over twice against Cal. They have, for the most part, held on to the football. They didn't have any turnovers at Wisconsin. Didn't have any against Arizona. And uh, tonight, if this holds, it'll be the second, the first time. Well, their first turnover changed the complexion of the game. BYU's control on the clock. Utah State had had a, a very brief first drive, and it changed the changed the game that first turnover. He's, I feel like he's got that, and he's controlling it before he slides out of bounds. I guess the only question they would have is, does he have control of it or is it still? So he doesn't have a control of it here. Does he have control of it there? I think he does right there. And I think he's in bounds at that point. The line judge is looking right at him. And he ruled it uh, out of bounds. So they'd have to overturn that. I'm taking notes. Hitting instructions from up above here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Boy, Utah State has come out crisp and clean tonight. And BYU and when they, when they take this struggle. long, they're talking about, okay, so then where does the ball need to go and how much time is on the clock? And so, and that's just very poor fundamentals. You got to tuck that football high and tight away. That came out too easily. Utah State's been way more aggressive. BYU's been on their heels this entire first quarter. We saw a turnover last second. week just before halftime with Katoa. Right. These are, the these, are game, these are game killers. Short fields, pick sixes, just kill teams. And the wait continues. More note taking continues. That's our referee, Kevin Boitman. Kind of looks like they're drawing up a play. Yes. Yeah, so you like, go here and I'll okay. go here. Then the, then the running back's going to go out here. All right. Here comes the ruling. After further review, the fumble was recovered inbounds by a member of Utah State. It will be Utah State's first ball, first and 10 at the 35-yard line. The clock operator, please reset the game clock to 14 minutes, 54 seconds. Big play by the local product out of Stansbury, Chase Christiansen. And Utah State has it at the BYU 35-yard line, leading 14 to nothing. And that cheer you heard, there are a lot of Aggie fans oh, yeah. here in the stadium tonight. Now BYU's defense just trying to keep the Cougars in the game. Utah State looking to deliver an early knockout punch. Wright's got it running to his right. Inside the 30. Slices for six, maybe seven. Trajan Peel finally pulls him down. It'll be second down and four. They give him six. They'll try it again. First down run inside the 25. Down near the 22. Taki Taki and Shelton up to make the tackle. Both of these running backs, they, they kind of split time with Bright and Thompson. Great quickness to the perimeter. They stretch you out and you have a hard time estimating how quick they are. Love to the end zone. Incomplete. Nobody near the football. It'll be second down and 10. Time over there in motion. 
motion. Get in position. Top of your screen. Second and ten. And Raymond moves over. Raymond had a touchdown against the Cougars last year. And he has one touchdown on the season. Keep your eye on big number 87. They'll run it now to the left. Big hit. Inside the 20 to the 19. Four yards on the pickup. Taki, Taki. Stan Anderson in there. Utah what? State. A lot of speed to the perimeter. You talk about BYU's fly sweep. Utah State does that off of motion. They use the wide receivers in the run game as well, or they take the running backs and split them out wide and bring them in motion and hand them the football at full speed. Third down. Right out of the backfield, and he's got the football. Anderson, beautiful play, and a flag comes down. He might have been getting held, fought through the hold, and then dropped bright. It's a loss of two. Personal foul, face mask, number 23. Or he used the Defense. face mask. At the distance to the goal line, automatic first down. Boy, how many mistakes can BYU and make he, in and one And he half. played that play perfectly until the tackle. And, and so he took on the lead blocker. He held his ground. And then, I mean, you couldn't see it that well, but you saw the head turn. Let's take a look right there. there see how he gets? That's, he was able to make the tackle by grabbing onto the face mask, and that's why you get that personal foul, that head turn. And so what was a really good play until the tackle turns into a devastating play for BYU. Kalani Sataki looking on. First down, Utah State. After the penalty, takes the ball inside the 10. It'll be first and goal for the Aggies. Love has been unfazed by BYU's defensive pressure. BYU gave Browning all day to throw last week, and he just lit him up. And they've given Love plenty of time here so far tonight. Now they'll run to the left. Wilcox grabs Thompson, throws him out of bounds, but not before he gets four. Both of these running backs, Bright's 5'9", Thompson's 5'8". So little guys, they get in behind that offensive line, they're hard to see. You gotta, you gotta play your gap and, and be really, really sound defensively. Austin Lee got up slow, and they're gonna send him off the field. He's been banged up. He'll be attended to, back on the field, a second and goal. BYU needs somebody to make a play. Yeah, for, if you're BYU's defense, you got to start thinking, man, it's our turn to, to force a turnover and make a big play. Love over the middle. Touchdown! Tarver fired a bullet through the BYU defense. And it is 20 to nothing, Utah State. It's just fantastic catch here by Ronquavian Tarver. Watch this catch. This is a bullet throw in a tiny window, and the concentration by Tarver to bring that thing in. First touchdown catch of the year for the senior out of Bell Glade, Florida. Everly in the kicker. And Utah State. He's pitching a shutout, 21 to nothing, here in the second quarter. Mistakes hurting BYU, and the Aggies are cashing in again. <laughs> 21 to nothing, Utah State. Thanks to that man, Tarver, with a spectacular catch in the end zone. Let's look at the Aggies' scoring drive. Started by this fumble on freshman Dallin Hulker. One Utah kid popping it up, and Christian and another Utah kid jumping on it. And when B BYU made a good play on third down to force a field goal attempt, and they grabbed the face mask and give him half the distance and a free first down. So 
Right now, BYU, Utah State's playing well. They're the aggressor, but BYU's handing him this football game. That's 14 points, one on a pick six, and another on a 35-yard field, um, aided by a face mask penalty. So BYU's really not doing anything to, to take away the confidence to slow down this Utah State team, and they can't do a thing right right now. And right now, the only other team more depressed than BYU in America is Wisconsin. Right. Right. As they are watching this on national TV, and uh, they're watching BYU get run out here at home, making the mistakes that they did not make in Madison. Now the Cougars are on the brink of getting blown out here if they can't do something on this possession as they have failed to stop Utah State outside of that opening drive. Here's Hefo, and Eberly has it on the tee. Getting hammered by Washington, that's one thing. Getting beat by Cal, you know, they're in the top 25 last week, that's, that's a one thing. Getting hammered here at home by Utah State, that's a whole different thing. He fell from the goal line, looking for a lane. He's got a lot of speed if he can kick it to the outside. He's tripped up at the 20. He goes down at the 21. Let's go down onto the field, Lauren McClain. Defensive coordinator Lisa Tuiaki went to the defensive puddle and he said, don't get stuck in the rush defense. Then Ed Lamb, assistant coach, came over and said, that's what these guys do sometimes. They're going to score. You can't dis get disheartened. You have to play hard. Dave. Thank you, Lauren. BYU starts this drive on the 21. Not been able to establish anything on the ground so far tonight. Katoa's in the backfield. And it's Katoa moving forward. Four yards. Christopher Unga. He's the younger brother of Wani Unga, who start BYU and in the NFL. He's now the linebacker coach at Utah State. Look at the average field position. Utah State's average starting field position is BYU's 49. That doesn't happen very, very often in a football game where your average field position is in the other team's territory, and BYU's is at their own 32. Long fields versus short fields. Still early in the second quarter. Katoa moves out of the backfield. Mangum rolling to his right. Pressure comes. And he throws it out of the into the Aggie sideline. No chance at that. Dylan Colley the closest to the ball. We thought we'd see a lot more of Colley. We thought we'd see a lot more receivers doing a lot more downfield this season. But Colley has been MIA. Made that big catch against Arizona and has seldom had his number called since. They haven't targeted him uh, very much this season. And if you're a defense playing BYU right now, you you have to say, you know what? We're just going to defend the run until BYU can prove to us that they can throw the ball downfield and throw it. Look how flat this defensive lineman to start is. They show flat and blitz, and, and they look like they're going to come here. Third down and six. And they come. Tanner in trouble. Throws it nowhere. And another punt coming. And the crowd is growing anxious. And, and Utah State does exactly what we're talking about. They're saying, you know what? We don't think you can get it up the field. We don't think you can throw it or get it out. We're going to bring pressure, and we dare you to try to beat us in the pass game, and BYU can't do it on third down. Fui Lua at a Spanish fourth via Oklahoma State up there to apply pressure on Mangum. Red Almond is in to kick it, and Nathan is deep for Utah State. You've got to wonder, Blaine, this offense is so lifeless if they look to Zach Wilson, a freshman, for any kind of spark before this game's out of hand. Pressure comes. Almond just does get it away, but it's a short one. Catches a BYU break and a roll down near the 41-yard line. 34-yard punt thanks to a generous roll. 21-0 Aggies. BYU football on BYU TV is brought to you by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. AAA. Learn more at AAA.com. And by Les Olson Company, your office technology partner. Welcome back to Lavelle Edwards Stadium. It's a brisk Friday night. 
BYU versus Utah State. Aggies on top right now, 21 to zero in the second quarter. There's the old wagon wheel. The winner of these two schools get to take it home for the year. It's been a tradition since 1948 in honor of the Mormon pioneers crossing the plains. There's been a history of theft with the wagon wheel, oftentimes by people not even affiliated with either school. When BYU wins, they usually hold on to the wagon wheel, but Matt Wells brought it to give his team inspiration tonight. Dave. Lauren, thank you on first down. Aaron Bonds wrapped up for a two yard loss by Michael Shelton. Nice play by Shelton. Utah State's only won once over the last 40 years here in Provo. That was in 2014. Love with it on the rollout. There's a strike right near the marker. Green with another catch. He beats Chris Wilcox on the play and sets up third down and short. Wilcox looked like he was in position to be able to make a play on that one, but just couldn't locate the ball and break on the football to break that up. He stops him short of the first down. Third down in the yard. Utah State's not won back-to-back -back games in this series since 1973 and 74. In 73, Richard Nixon was the president, and in 74, he had resigned. That's how long ago it was since the Aggies have won two in a row. But they are playing tough here tonight, and they pick up the first down. Well, it'll pin on the spot. Looked like Allen had it. And maybe close enough to measure. BYU had him stopped uh, here behind the line of scrimmage and just didn't play. You talk about playing solid on the edge. That's what they lacked at, at Washington. They have to not allow that ball to be bounced to the edge. And we're going to measure this one very close. They had signaled for fourth down on the field. The officials are in between the offense and defensive lines as they bring the sticks out. And Utah State, with how they've been flying, there's no question they'll go for it. They'll stretch that out. BYU Utah State meeting basketball Wednesday, December 5th. Right here on BYU TV. That's how far the Aggies need. So they'll gamble here in the middle of the field. It could be a turning point. What would you do, Brian? I'd punt it. And the reason I would punt it is there, there, there's no reason to give BYU any life. If you punt it down there and give BYU a long field, they show no ability to drive the length of the field. If, if you take this chance when you're up by 21 and they get a stop, it's a momentum changer. And they're and they're able to finally have a short field in this ball game. So that's just me. I'm, I'm a I'm a you know you've asked me over here. I'm a very conservative guy. What would Lavelle do? Lavelle would punt. What's Matt Wells gonna do? He's got his offense out on the field, and now he sends in the punting unit. That doesn't go over well with the Aggie if, fans. If, if it was a tight okay. game and, and, and you needed some type of momentum boost and it's worth rolling the dice, but where you have all the momentum and where BYU has been able to do literally nothing on, on uh, offense. Now they're going to fake it, or at least make it look like they are. Fourth and short. And they're going to try to draw BYU off. BYU's not buying it. Heinze is back. Looking as if he's going to punt it. Play clock's at four. And they're just going to take a delay a game and give their punter, who's averaging 43 yards a kick, a few more yards. I think, unless they burned a timeout. And because, well, yeah, there's a penalty. The delay. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. And that's not, not bad uh, strategy there. You go, you know what? Why take the risk? We're going to punt it anyhow, but let's see if, if we can get BYU to jump off Little and get antsy. them to get antsy and and pick up the first down via penalty. And then if not, you're, you're going to go ahead and punt it anyhow. And, you know, I think this is the right the right move. And, and uh, where they have so much momentum, where they played so well defensively, I think you challenge BYU to have to drive a long field. Heinze is a junior out of Sandy. He went to Alta and then Weber State in 2016 before transferring over to Utah State. Shelton is deep. No blocks on the year for Heinze. No pressure. 
And Shelton calls for a fair catch at the 12. Goes down with the ball. 43-yard punt. And now the Cougar offense comes back out, and they have been stalled. Through four games, pretty good, considering. Since Washington, it ends tonight, not so much. And Washington really gave BYU fits last week up in Seattle, just seven points, 194 yards of total offense. And you look at tonight, 44 total yards of offense. And Utah State's strategy has been, they're going to challenge BYU at the line of scrimmage. They're going to really defend the run first and see if BYU can throw the football. Drive starts at the 12. Mangum with all day to throw. Incomplete. Throws it behind Bushman. Our flag comes in late. That flag flew 20 yards through the air. It's going to be and holding it's... on the defense. BYU catches a break. Holding. Number 48. Defense. 10 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Christiansen with the hold. He's had a really good football game up to this point. He's been all over the place for this Aggie defense. That takes the ball out to the 22. Now Mangum up under center. Katoa in the backfield. Hifo. Mangum barks out new commands. This is Katoa. White shirts are waiting for him. And Utah State has done an excellent job taking away BYU's ground attack. That one for three yards. Out of Oye, out of St. Louis, up to make the stop. And Matt Wells this week, as he was uh, doing interviews to get ready for the rivalry game, he talked about defensively the plan has got to be to stop the run first to not allow BYU to, to get in behind, behind that big offensive line and control the game and run the football. And they've done a fantastic job of that through a quarter and a half here. Collie in motion on second down. Mangum steps up, looks downfield, drops it off short, and Katoa can't handle it. Flags are down in the Aggie secondary. Let's see if they got Gilly with a hold again. Mangum running for his life. Holding. Number 25. Defense. Ten-yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's Shaq Bond. You just have to thank the Aggies for back-to-back -back first downs. Well, and this this was the primary receiver running down and trying to, to break loose. And uh, and that's why Tanner Mangum came off of that receiver. The flag comes out, and, and BYU gets a first down via penalty. And you know what, though? I, play a physical. Grab onto the guys. Force the officials to make a call. If BYU has struggled to get off of tight coverage. Now, this is a couple of holding calls now on this drive, so maybe you got to back off a little bit. Out to the 35. The razzle-dazzle. Back to Mangum. He winds up. Chucks it deep downfield for Hifo. Flags will come out. Ball was underthrown, and while Hefo hung up with it, he was hit by Wade, and another penalty on the Aggie defense. This razzle dazzle we've seen tonight. Pass interference, number seven, defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. DJ Williams. That's one of these ones. They're so difficult to defend an underthrown ball, and. And Tanner Mangum, he had to throw off of his heel because he was getting hit in the fate by, face by Christian Anson, and his, the ball's underthrown, and Hefo comes goes to come back <laughs> it to was it. was a Wade that tackled they, him. They, they, did, they called it on the wrong guy because <laughs> there's no doubt that, that was Wade that, that interfered there. That's, that's a tough one to defend. You're trying to recover, and then the ball's underthrown, and the receiver's trying to come back to the football. And, hey, better, better to take the pass interference than to give up a long, long throw. That's three first downs the Aggie defense has given BYU on this drive. Now it's Cauley. There's Katoa running straight ahead. Just not a lot there. Picks up three. New day, eight minutes. 21-0 Utah State. David Woodward makes the tackle. C number 96, Christopher Unga. All 295 pounds of it. Second 
If BYU can just stay on the field, the Aggies will put them in the end zone. Yeah, they have play. more yards and penalties than they do in total yards of <laughs> offense awesome. right now. Second down and eight. Canada out of the backfield. Now Squally comes back around, gets it, tries to get around the corner. Powell couldn't make his block, and Squally got a yard as hard. Well. It'll be third down, and Squally is slow to get up. Lelula and company not fooled by this end around. And, and watch how aggressive Utah State is coming out of the secondary on those edges. When Buehler runs the fly sweep or any of that kind of edge motion, they come and they sell out on the run. Canada doesn't look right. He heads to the bench. Third down. Third and seven. Milne in motion. Another freshman making the impact. Blitz comes over the middle. Simon! And Simon's got a first down to the Aggie. 36. He beats Jamarcus Ingram for 17 yards. And Tanner Mangum, because of the motion, he knew he had man-to-man -man defense. So that allowed him to get a pre-snap read. Then you have to trust our, my, my guy can beat your guy in man-to-man -man defense if, if I put the ball in the right spot. He puts the ball in a really good spot, and Simon on that slant route gets open against man cover. This is as close as BYU's been to the Aggie end zone. 6-17 to play here in the first half. On first down, Simon in motion. Mangum under pressure, sidearms it to El Bakri. Inside the 35 to the 33. David Woodward on the tackle, and for El Bakri, his fourth catch on the season. Gain of three. El Bakri is out of Brighton High School in Salt Lake City. And that is a tough, tough throw that Tanner Mangum makes. The pressure coming off the edge in his face. He's got to whip his shoulders around to get the ball out there. It was a really, really good throw. And seven. Mangum again. All kinds of time. Over the middle. It is Nepo. Tackle to the 20. Flag comes in. Might be a horse collar tackle. Aaron Way on the stop. Another first down for BYU. 14 yards. The way Hefo hit the ground. Yeah, kind of spun around really quickly. That flag came in. The line judge right there in front of Hefo. They're having a long discussion. Perhaps we can see that replay and see what they're talking about. It's a first down play. Now the microphone will come on. There is no foul for a face mask on the play. The result of the play is a first down. So thought, thought he saw a face mask. They had a conversation about it um, with the other officials and, who had good angles and decided to, to pick it up. Let's see here. He just got no, him by just, the shoulder. Just had him by the shoulder, and it was a good tackle. Um, the way his head spun around, I think they thought he had a hold of the face mask. It's a good job by the other officials to come in and say, no, I didn't, I didn't see it from my angle. First down, BYU, the Aggie 19. Collie in motion. Out of the backfield, Mangum throws. Hefo again, first and goal for the Cougars. Down to the five. 14 yards on the play. BYU finding success over the middle. Well, and if, and if Utah State's going to play so aggressive and downhill against the run, there's going to be some space in that intermediate. If the linebackers are thinking, run first, run first, run first, and you play action pass, there is space between the safeties and the backers, and that's where it is. If the Cougars can get in the end zone, they can thank Utah State for three defensive penalties on this drive. All three gave them first downs. The toe in the backfield. First and goal, BYU at the five. Mangum back to pass. Drops it off to Katoa. Touchdown! First receiving touchdown of the year for Katoa, and the fourth touchdown pass by Mangum. And Katoa releasing out of the backfield and should be picked up, blown coverage. Rockamore 
is the guy that should have been in coverage, but he's playing run and then thought that he was going to be blocked by Katoa, who ran right by him for the easy catch and the easy touchdown. Skyler Southam out of Wasatch High School in Heber City. Right down the middle. And BYU's on the board. 428 to go in the first half. It's now 21 to 7, Utah State. Our scoring summary is presented by Deseret First Credit Union. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future. Nine plays, 88 yards. Tanner Mangum to Lapini Katoa. It's BYU on the board. Three defensive penalties on that drive that gave the Cougars first downs. And, and this is the breakdown. Six rushing yards, 35 penalty yards, and 47 passing yards on that drive that's a balanced attack that, that's completely balanced if you include the the penalties so utah state you know what it was time for utah state to give some gifts back as byu's given them gifts in that first quarter especially andrew mickelson will tee it up and gerald bright is deep for utah state the momentum shift here in the stadium it is fielded at the one yard line right to the 15 out of bounds near the 23. Our score box sponsor is Brady Industries, a provider of commercial cleaning supplies and equipment, longtime friend of BYU TV Sports. Let's get an update on Squally Canada. He didn't look right when he left the field. Marin. Dave, he's been struggling with some ankle issues, and I just told that about four minutes ago, trainers took him back in the locker room to check him out. Still unsure whether he's coming back to this game. Dave. Thanks, Lauren. Jordan Love and the Aggies. We'll start this drive at the 24. And Love calls his own number. Royal blue shirts converge. Zach Daw at a Pleasant Grove High School. Drops him after a gain of one. So the Aggies motion out so they go no backs, but a design run play for Jordan Love to be the ball carrier. BYU doing a good job of holding all the gaps on that line of scrimmage. Crowd makes a little more noise. Second down at nine. Under four minutes to play here in the first half. We would love to get the ball back before the break. Four-man rush. Out of the backfield is Thompson. He's got the first down at the 35. Austin Lee finally shakes him out. It's getting a little heated. This is where Utah State is so good is in the open field. You get the ball to playmakers out in the open field, and a guy like Thompson with so much quickness, what, what's a two-yard throw turns into an eight-yard gain or a nine-yard gain. They get a first down. Remove the chains. Love looks over to the sideline. Utah State has a tremendous kicking weapon. This is Love, drops it off, and out of bounds. It's with an incompletion to Green. Very close to being a lateral. Went forward just enough. It'll be second down and 10. Again, the Aggies, they get their formation and they step back. And the defense will wait for Jordan Love to Set his troops. Second and ten. Still no Agnew turnover. Here's Thompson. Dropped. Michael Shelton nails him. A gain of one. It'll be third down and long. Boy, Michael Shelton has really played good Been football very, last year. Very physical the last couple weeks on, on that corner for BYU. And for, for Utah State here. We seem to do a great job of hitting quick hitters here and then letting their playmakers make the play and get a first down. Aggies are one for four on third downs. Pressure comes. 
over the middle, incomplete. And the punting unit will come on with 2.10 to go. That's a big defensive series for BYU. They, they gained some momentum with an 88-yard drive. Now this is back-to-back -back stops on Utah State's offense. If, if BYU can get some points before halftime, then, then all of a sudden they're back in this ball game. Even if they go into the locker room trailing, they, they, they have to feel like, wait a minute, they figured something out and stopped the bleeding. Hind C, this is Shelton. Takes a BYU bounce, and so the Aggies grab it. At the 15, 50-yard punt. Here come the Cougars. BYU with the ball here late in the first half. Let's take a look at what they did. The last time they had the ball, Blaine, just a couple of minutes ago, they got some help. The holding penalty that advanced the ball and gave BYU first down. Then a pass interference penalty. And, and then Utah State really helping BYU. And then when they got down in scoring territory, Levahipo with a couple of big grabs and then this touchdown pass to Katoa to get seven on the board. And it was an impressive drive, aided by three big penalties on Utah State. But BYU primarily going with the throw game in that. And it put some pressure on Utah State. The, the penalties came because BYU is attacking the secondary in the throw game. Now this drive will start at their own 15. The BYU great, great two timeouts. 50-yard punt was clutch for Utah State there to, to give BYU a long field here with two, two minutes left. Five straight completions for Tanner on that last drive. Interesting formation look for BYU on first down. Aggies back out of a blitz. Mandum winds up, throws it to Bushman. First down across the 30. That one was close to going the other way. And what hands by Bushman to pull it in. Gain of 18. Hey, Bushman, if you throw the ball to him away from the defender, chances are he's going to make, make the play long, long arms, really strong hands. And you saw it demonstrated right there. Bushman beating Ingram on the coverage. And Ingram was close. That was close coverage. It was a turnover just before halftime last week that doomed the Cougars at Washington. Everybody out of the backfield for Mangum on first down. Gunner Romney, his first catch of the night. Romney gets out of bounds. Crossed the 40 to the 41. To be second down and short. Ingram again involved in the play. Eight for Romney. Outstanding freshman out of Chandler, Arizona. Key for BYU, these two completions, both receivers getting out of bounds and stopping the clock. So preserving timeouts BYU has two timeouts left in this ball game or in this half um, and they they used the sidelines well on these first two throws. Collie at the top of the screen as a flag comes out Tanner quickly pointing at Utah State now the officials huddle up And then they jump right into a long conversation. Well, because the conversation is, did somebody on the defense simulate signals and bark things out and force BYU to move? And that looked like that was what Mangum was protesting. Yep. And that's, that's the question. You can't... The way of game, defense, yep. disconcerting signals. The very disconcerting to the quarterback. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Very good yeah. for that. Disconcerting signals to the quarterback. The first You're like, hey, I'm trying to get something done here. This is very disconcerting. Take a look. There's the movement. Not a lot of it, but it's the fourth and, and penalty that gives BYU a first down. And you can move and shift. You just can't make a noise or, or, or bark out when you're doing it. Mangum again. Ball's batted around, and Tanner catches it. That's his first reception. Reception. That he threw to himself. That he threw to himself. <laughs> The picks up two yards. Hey, we, we saw Fox Steve going. Young when he was in the NFL do yeah. one of those, but he got a few more yards than that. Yes, he did. Now under a minute. Colley, top of your screen. A long time since Colley had a chance to make a big play. Mangum, all day to throw. Winds up downfield for Colley, and a flag comes down. Ingram. 
Newton. And another defensive penalty and another first down for BYU. Pass interference, number two, defense. 15-yard penalty. And sometimes Automatic you have, first down. You have to trust your guys. And so, so Tanner's got all kinds of time to say, you know what, I got one-on-one -on -one out there. I'm just going to throw it out and let my guy make a play. Now, he underthrew the football. And again, same kind of penalty. Colley trying to work back to the football. And that's a tough thing for Ingram to cover. He grabs a hold and, and picks up the pass interference penalty. Eight penalties on Utah State to just one for BYU here in the half. Most of those on the Aggies the last two possessions. First down, BYU at the Utah State 37. Mangum again with all day to throw. This is Katoa. Katoa is close to another first down. That will stop the clock with 39 seconds to go. Moving into the range of Skyler Southam. BYU is called a timeout. On this play, the Aggies go with just a three-man rush. And so Tanner Mangum knowing nobody deeps open. Everybody's covering. Going to get it out quickly to Katoa and let him run with the football. It's a good decision to get it out quick underneath the coverage. Blaine, it's almost as if Utah State came into this game and said, you can't throw, so we're just going to stop the run. And the last two drives have been all about the throw. And in the secondary, they look lost. They're grabbing guys, one penalty after the other. And Mangum is moving them down into scoring position. And, B and BYU, you had to wonder, when are they going to try to push the ball up the field? And even if it's just putting pressure on that secondary, you got to get that secondary and those linebackers to feel like they have to drop back and defend something, or you can't run the football. Now the Cougars need to finish the drive. 39 seconds to play. BYU has one timeout. Utah State has a timeout. They did pick up a first down on Katoa's extra effort. So the ball's at the 27. Nine straight completions for Mango. Simons at the top of your screen. First down at the Aggie 27. Mangum again. All kinds of time. Throws for Bushman. Incomplete. Bushman stopped in the route, and the ball sailed, and he couldn't catch up to it. Ferguson on the coverage. And, and that's a matchup that you like. I mean, Gage Ferguson's really, really physical, but one-on-one, -on -one, a six-foot safety on a 6'5 tight end, you need to throw that ball so that Bushman can keep his body between the defender and the ball and just go get that one. That would be a tough one to defend, and, and instead, Mangum puts that one in a spot where he can't go get it. Second down and 10, 33 seconds to go. Shumway, top of your screen. Aggies bring a blitz. Mangum, out of the pocket. Throws to the sideline, incomplete intended for Hifo. Williams on the coverage, 26 seconds to play. Excellent coverage by DJ Williams. AC transfer. Broke on the foot, uh, broke on the football and got a hand in. Didn't wrap that back arm around. That's just that's just textbook coverage right there. Third down and ten. And this is a tough one because it's on a rollout. Look at see how he he didn't wrap that left arm around. He kept it in front. He got a hand on the football. That's that's perfect right there. The middle has been good to BYU in the second quarter. It's third and ten. Blitz comes by Utah State. They will flip it to a Katoa, but the Aggies are there. Not fooled. Anderson up to make the stop. A gain of a yard is all, and BYU will likely just let time run down before they send out the field goal kicker. And Jeff Grimes may have thought he saw something there, but it wasn't there. So Southam will come back in after the timeout. And they take their final timeout with four seconds to go. Not happy with that call? What do you think? It, a very conservative call. And, and uh, you know, you like to think that they could push it in the middle of the field. And Utah State actually brought people that time. So they, they didn't stay back and play pass coverage. Uh, you and I were watching Southam warm ups, and he was. We were watching him kick 52 yarders. He was hitting him right down the middle. This will be about a 44 yarder. Gavin Fowler is the holder out of Davis High School. And Southam will attempt the field goal. 
This is a Mountain America field goal. If they make it, Mountain America will donate another $500 to the American Red Cross. Skyler's five of seven on field goals as long as 47. Last play of the half, barring a penalty. Ball is down. Kicks on its way, and no good. Missed opportunity for BYU. And halftime arrives here in Provo. Utah State will get the ball to start in the third quarter. They've got a 21-7 lead. And for BYU, they needed to get some points out of this one. And he's, you can see Southam was trying to coach it to hook just a little bit because it was just wide right. He wanted it to hook back, and it just wouldn't hook back around. Freshman kicker back from his church mission misses at the break. And the Aggies take momentum into the locker room and a two-touchdown advantage. 88th meeting, BYU and Utah State. Mistakes cost the Cougars early, and the Aggies lead by 14 here on BYU TV. here in Provo, Utah State, leading BYU 21-7. The temperature is dropping here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Dave McCann, Blaine Fowler. But in those two locker rooms, the temperature's got to be sky high from the head coaches. Matt Wells yelling at his guys because they let BYU back into the game with all those penalties in the second quarter. And Kalani's got to be fired up because his team's played so poorly. Yeah, and especially in that first quarter, BYU played on their heels. They, they made mistakes. They basically handed Utah State a 14-point lead. They just spotted them 14 points with a pick six and then a short field where they turned the ball over on a third and 20. They throw a pass to a tight end behind the line of scrimmage and fumble the football, and then Utah State gets a short field. And So here we are, BYU down by 14. Utah State gets 21 points on the board, but in total yardage, they're they're dead even. Let's BYU look has at those. twice as many first downs as Utah State does in, in this first half. Neither team really able to establish a rush game, as, as you can see there. And it seemed uh, for, for Utah State, when they were creating havoc, things were going well. They were doing a good job of stopping the run. When BYU decided they're going to push the ball up the field and throw it a little bit, Utah State struggled. Can you lose a game on the game's first mistake? We will see. But this play here on fourth and one, the game changer in that first half. And, and, and wide open on the play was El Bakri on a narrow route. Um, and that ball just needed to be pulled down and, and let him clear the outside linebacker. And then the, the Aggies came down. A great play call here where they fake the fly sweep. They roll Love out to the right and they throw it back to Bright for the touchdown. Here's great one of the catches ball. of the night. Tarver pulls it in the back of the engine. 21 and nothing before BYU wakes up. Uh, and it was when BYU started to throw the football. They threw the ball primarily down the field. They had aided by three Utah State defensive penalties, and Katoa gets into the end zone on this arrow pass out of the backfield. All right, what did uh, Kalani Sutaki tell the troops at halftime? Well, he, I'm certain he got into him a little bit about effort level and focus and concentration that first half. It did seem like once BYU's defense started to gauge the speed of this Utah State offense, that they defended very much better. They had uh, two straight drives where they were able to get Utah State off the field. And, and now they got to kick the football off to Utah State, who's going to get the ball first here to start the half. Corbin Kafusi said this week, this is the most important game of the season. As you start October with that September tough schedule behind you, uh, these are games you have to win. And Kafusi and his comrades on defense have got to figure out how to go back out there and get two turnovers that uh, BYU's offense gave to Utah State. And when you're a defender, you do have that mindset where you go, okay, you know what? Our football team gave up. Our offense gave up. So now it's our job to go out and get the football back and match those turnovers. And 
And I would expect BYU to throw the ball in field a little bit more here in the second half. It'll be interesting to see what Utah State does to adjust defensively uh, because they really loaded it up and played downhill against the run in that first half. And it wasn't until late in the in the second quarter that BYU started to attack them uh, with a throw game. The impact players, two quarterbacks. Love had a very good first quarter and Tanner with a much better second quarter. At 10 of 15 uh, for Jordan Love, the two touchdowns uh, is, is, is big. We saw the highlight of the throw to Bright and then, then his throw inside on that um, that slant route to Tarver was a beautiful throw. And then Tanner Mangum, the last two drives looked very efficient throwing the football, getting the ball downfield and, and putting pressure on that Utah State defense. Over the last 19 meetings, Utah State just 3-5 and five against BYU and leading at halftime. And they lead it 21 to 7 and the Aggies will get the ball to start the third quarter. Elisa Tuiaki had to have gotten into his defense to wake them up to start the second half. Yeah, and I and I thought that BYU's defense played much better the last two drives. Now, now adjustment time happens. So so what did Utah State talk about in that locker room on offense that they can do differently because they stalled out their last two drives and uh you know, for, for BYU, I just felt like the last couple drives, Tuyaki's defense gauged the speed a little bit better, played the edge a little bit better, and, and, weren't, and they weren't allowing uh, quite so much space out there. Reality check, second half for these two programs. Both believing that they can get to the postseason, both projected to be in bowls as of tonight. This game is a swing game for both. The Aggies have the Mountain West Conference to contend with. And BYU will have Hawaii here next Saturday and then Northern Illinois later in the month. But this is a big one, and that makes these next two quarters all the more important. Mickelson picks it off, and Bright is deep for Utah State. A yard in, thinks about it, and then brings it out and is chased out at the 19. Well, it's when you hesitate for a second like that, the best thing to do is just kneel down. Now, he's fortunate he didn't get tackled at the 12-yard line. He broke a tackle and, and got out to the 20. If you're thinking about not bringing it out, don't bring it out. Those are words to live by. Sawyer Powell got him out of bounds. And here is Love and Thompson ready to go to work in an all-important first possession of the third quarter. Thompson out of the backfield. Pump. Love wants the deep ball. Throws it downfield. And it's off the fingertips of a wide open Jordan Nathan. And a gasp from the crowd. The design of the play worked perfectly. They, Utah State's known for throwing those bubble screens. They fake the bubble screen to try to get the safeties to run up and react. And then they throw the, the seam ball or the, or the fade ball and just out of his reach. That could have been a big, big play. Second down and 10. Good total yards, each at 136. The difference to BYU turnovers. And the Aggies will run it on second and 10. Thompson, right through, arm tackles, picks up a first down. Up to the 32, a gain of 13. Troy Warner finally and for gets BYU, it down. That's what happened to BYU against Washington last week. No edge. Look at this left side. Nobody's playing the edge for BYU, and so the play designed to, to go upfield bounces back to the right. You have to have somebody there to play the edge and be physical. Back to Thompson again. Hadley. And Anderson. Hit him high and hit him low, but he picks up four. And brings up second down. Team that runs the ball wins the game. We talked about that before we got started. This is Tarver. He's got another first down. Pushes the ball up to the 44. Ron Quavey and Tarver. Wilcox and Lee. So the Aggies have come out swinging here in the third quarter. The offense has played mistake-free football with the exception of that drop bomb a few minutes ago. Love's had a tremendous year. Last week, a career high passing, 356 yards, and a couple of touchdowns two weeks ago against Air Force. Utah State had last week off. High snap. 
Back to Thompson. Taki Taki has him, but he still drags forward for a couple. Now to the 49. A gain of five. Had him at two, and he turns for three more. Thompson doing a good job. He's very compact. Good lower body strength. 5'8 and 200 pounds. Plays a really low pad level. Second down and five. Second straight week we've seen a BYU defense that hasn't been very aggressive. Over the middle. Another first down. Vaughn says Love slices up the BYU defense for seven more. Quick throw, just that stop route. So easy if you don't get help from the linebackers underneath in those throwing lanes to complete. Into BYU territory, first and ten, Utah State. in the center, hands the ball back to Love. Big play! The Aggies have been doing it all season. And Thompson inside the 15. Shelton saves a touchdown. Gain of 31. And that's what we've seen from the run game for Utah State. They Not, not seven yards a carry, but the guys average seven yards a carry because they get two and three and four, and then all of a sudden they rip off a 30-yarder or a 40-yarder. BYU changes out. Five Cougars, and now they're not sure how many got numbers-wise. But Powell trying to get everyone in the right spot. First down, Aggies. Thompson. And he is just running right through BYU. Out of bounds at the four. Powell saves the touchdown. That was bright on the run. So you, when, when you come up, you, the edge was played, you got to play inside out, and you can't miss that tackle. So that time we talk about being solid on the edge, force it back inside, and the inside out guys have to make the play. Flag down, stops the play. Ball start, number 76, offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Roman Andres, another former BYU player, finding a home at Utah State. That left side of the line from the center, left guard, left tackle, center a mission to New York, the left guard a mission to Spain, and Andrus a mission to Mexico. First down and goal now back at the seven. Right back to Thompson. He gets to the five. Gain of two. Second and goal. Devin Kafusi leading the defensive pursuit. Younger brother of Corbin. Back to work. In the yard on that play, so it's second down and goal from the six. Love to the end zone. Wide open. Touchdown. Jalen Green. The BYU secondary is no match for the sophomore quarterback tonight. Similar to the, the slant touchdown thrown to Tarver earlier. Play action. So you play it. Holds the linebacker. So now you have no underneath help. And you just have to rely on your corners to be really good in man coverage. And you saw Kafushi dropping Isaac Fusi to get in the throwing lane but not able to locate where that receiver is and get in that passing lane and the, the corner was playing with outside leverage like he had help inside and that help just wasn't there. Beverly back on to stay perfect in his Utah State career. Falls down and he's true. Flags down. BYU is offsides. And they'll decline it and take the point. Offside, number 19. The penalty is declined. The try is good. 
Timeout. Aggies come out of the gate and send a message to BYU. They take a 28 to 7 lead. Well, that is one unhappy man. Kalani Sitaki looked up at the scoreboard, sees a 28 to 7. As Utah State takes that kickoff to start the third quarter, they march right down the field. Blaine, throw this touchdown and retake command of this football game. Look at that drive. Just a really good throw, a 10-play drive, 81 yards. Play action, confident throw, receivers that are getting open. And, and uh, to stop a slant, you either have to play inside leverage on the corner and just take it away. If you're playing outside of the receiver, uh, then you have to have the linebackers underneath in coverage to take it away. And that one looked look like the corner's playing outside and the, and the backers went too wide and allowed a beautiful throwing lane. And boy, that, this Utah State team is very good. We've watched them all season long. On those quick slants, Love is on the money. 18 starters back from last year, among the most in all of college football. This is he foul around the corner. Flag comes in. Good flag. Sailed 25 yards through the air. 29 yard return, but it's going to come back. And BYU struggling to get out of its own way here in this football game. During the return, holding number 41 on the return team. Half the distance to the goal line. First down. Utah State hammered BYU and Logan last year for seven turnovers and here tonight they forced two BYU doesn't forced any and up to this point they put a beat down on BYU again and average starting field position in, in this game continues to be difficult for BYU when they did get their score they had to drive a long field and, and they'll start again on their own 10 yard line after the penalty Mangum's gonna throw it on first down there's all day to throw finds Bushman Big play for Bushman up across the 40. Ferguson pushing him out of bounds. 32 yards for Bushman. Maybe Bushman needs to get the ball more often. Well, and BYU's done a pretty good job in pass protection for Tanner Mangum. He's back there as a, a pocket that stays solid for a long time, allowing Bushman to run up the field and get on open on that corner route. Out to the 42. Katoa continues at running back. Haven't seen Squally since he hobbled off. Blitz comes. Protection all day for Mangum. Now he's on the move. Throws it for Holker. Holker leads him out of bounds. Protection could not have been better for Mangum on that All, all day long to get the ball out. And that's what we're talking about. BYU's been, that's one area they've been solid in this game is pass protection. But Got to get guys open. You got to put the ball on. Hawker has a fumble tonight. And there he, that ball kind of carried him out of bounds for an incompletion. Second down. This is Katoa. Another flag comes in, 45. Aggies are pointing at BYU. It's a three-yard run for Katoa. Ten-yard penalty. Replay second down. It's Brady Christensen, redshirt freshman out of Bountiful High School, on the hold. And that'll back the Cougars up to the 32. They need to get to the Aggie 47. And BYU this season, when they've been second and 20, even first and 20, that's been a difficult thing to come back from. BYU's played this game tonight like it's their season opener. Not the October opener. Turnovers, penalties, mistakes, and they're working a big deficit. Second down. Mangum over the middle. Dax Mill. He lost his head on that play. He holds on to the ball. Gain of six. Well, that brings up third and long. Cameron Haney up to make the tackle. Haney's a junior out of Los Angeles. You see a lot of California and Florida players on this Utah State roster. Third down and 13.
the three-man rush for Utah State. All day to throw. Megan throws incomplete. Hifo was the closest to the ball. No one with a shot, and the punting unit comes in, and the crowd is... They got impatient the first quarter. <laughs> They're getting close to just being fed up. Well, and, and BYU, with, with that second and 20, they just get six yards on that second down, so it leaves them with just a, such a long distance to get there on third down, and then they're not, they've not been real effective throwing the ball 14, 15 yards downfield. Jones kicks it with his left foot. This is Nathan. And the Yankees will have it at the 17. 43-yard punt for Jones. 28 to 7 Utah State here in the third. Let's go back to another time. These two head coaches played against each other on this field. Matt Wells threw for 218 yards. Kalani Sataki had eight rushes for 40 yards with a long run of 14. Here comes Sataki. BYU won this one 34 to 6. And the two our head coaches now, they're alma maters, and tonight the Aggies have the upper hand. Six years now for Matt Wells. He's had plenty of moments under the gun. Kalani Sataki's under the gun here in his third season. And he's got a 28 to 7 deficit here midway through the third quarter in this battle for the wagon wheel. But Jordan Love has been a cool customer, this redshirt sophomore. We talked about BYU's need to rattle him, hit him, shake him early. They haven't done that, and he's settled in quite nicely. Now the end around. This is Bonds. He's still going. Kafusi finally tackles him, the defensive end. All the way downfield, 36 yards. Look, Utah State, they, they're right back on the line of scrimmage for more playing with pace and just have BYU on their heels completely. Now they step back. And BYU just looks lost on defense. They'll run it straight to Bright and kicks to the outside. Boy, they've had a lot of success running to the right in the second half. Taki Taki up with a tackle, but not before eight yards for Bright. We saw a similar struggle this last week against Washington. Play designed to go to the left. Backside washes down the line of scrimmage, and nobody stays on that backside edge, and they allow the running back to bounce back, back on the backside. Now it's Bright running straight ahead. Moves the pile, picks up another first down. Utah State has been the aggressor. This is the least aggressive we've seen BYU's defense all season long. And they weren't that aggressive last week, but we figured, well, it's Washington. That's why. Not tonight against Utah State. Right again. Two yards. Well, and the th Utah State is probably just as good as Washington is offensively. They're, they're, they're a completely different type of team. They're very dynamic. They're in the top five in the country in, uh, in, in a lot of categories offensively. But, but defensively, they haven't been great. BYU hasn't been able to move the ball. Blitz comes, tipped up, and away. Shelton got back to defend it. Taki Taki finally getting some pressure on Jordan Love. That'll bring up third down and seven. BYU's going to stay in this game. Plays like this one, third and seven are a must. Love in the shotgun. He'll step out. You like this when defense, when offenses do this? Drives me out of my mind. <laughs> Just because I, I hate I, when they get up on the run, but I know that what they do is they look at what the defense is doing and then they make an adjustment call from there. 
How about that? Three Cougars with a chance at Thompson. None of them can make the tackle. It's a first down. And now they're hearing it from their fans. 11 yards and a first down by Utah State. They are outclassing BYU in every phase of this football game. Thompson again. Leapfrogging inside the five to the four. Austin Lee saves the touchdown. 13 yards. When you now they're putting on a clinic. When you look at these two running backs, Gerald Bright, great quickness, but Thompson seems to run with a little more physicalness to him. There's Thompson. This time, BYU cuts him down. Gain of two. This a moment ago is whoop. Right over Troy Warner. BYU struggling to get the right personnel on the field. Second down. Love looks like he's having the time of his life, isn't he? Very poised. Th third year in the program. He knows this offense very well. And he just is extremely poised and in command. Thompson's got it running to the left. Daw and company pull him down. It'll be third and goal. You mentioned all these returning starters for Utah State coming back. And, and during fall camp, as everybody was watching the, this team kind of unfold, everybody felt like this could be the best offense Utah State's had in a long, long time. And they've, they've proven that through the first, first uh, month of the year, and they're looking every bit in the part here in this ball game offensively. They've scored 30 or more points in each of their first four games. That's a school record. And they're a touchdown away from getting back into the 30s again tonight. Lob to the end zone. You get a foot down, he did. Touchdown to Tarver. And this beatdown continues. It's 34 to 7. And Tarver, he's the perfect target for this. At 6'3 and 215 pounds, big guy. You just throw the fade out on the on the outside, you see him getting college football. You only have to get one foot down. He gets the right foot down. Right there inside that line for the touchdown. Mandel without looking back at no chance. Fourth touchdown pass of the game. A career best for Jordan Love. Eberly knocks it through. Four fifty-five to go here in the third quarter. Two possessions for Utah State and two touchdowns. It's thirty-five to seven, Aggies. Thirty-five to seven, Utah State. BYU has not been able to handle Jordan Love. Big run round the corner, and the Aggies. Had big plays all season long. Was the biggest tonight as Aaron Bonds gets into BYU territory. Big missed tackle here on third down. Would have forced at least a field goal try, but Thompson runs through everybody. And then Tarver in the end zone making her look easy. And Love with a career high four touchdowns. Two weeks ago tonight, Blaine, BYU was ranked 20th in the country. They've since been defeated, or at least outscored, 70 to 14 in two games. And Utah State is doing what Washington did to BYU last week. But the final score was 35 7. So we're in the third quarter. Washington, very, very different offensively. More deliberate, run based, you know, augmented with a pass. Utah State's a wide open, get it out there. They've been scoring 50 points a game. It's a, it's a completely different challenge. And BYU now on their heels. And Utah State's defense has played better than advertised. The offense has outshined them all season long, but their defense has held BYU to seven points so far here in Provo. And to their credit, and the Cougars will have it at the 25-yard line. Now let's talk about Zach Wilson. It's 35 to 7. You have some games where you can use him to you, get experience. You can, you can play him up to four games if you want to without a burning a red shirt for him. But I think Kalani Stocky wants to see if they can get some quick scores in here and not, not say, hey, with 4.55 left in the game, there's no chance to come back in this thing. 
And you're assuming that that Mangum can do that. Here he backs up and just chucks it deep for Hefo. Incomplete. Hefo had to hang up just a little bit, and he looks like he's hurt. Running with Ingram and Wade. Not sure he knows where he is. It's a tough kid. I love the Hefo. Here's another look at the bomb. Play action. This ball is actually thrown in a really good spot. Just letting it fly. We haven't seen BYU do this very often to stretch stretch defenses like this. That, that ball just needs to be caught. Look like uh, Ingram got Ingram his may have gotten a there. little bit of a hand on it. Got to go up and high point it and get it. Second and ten. Pressure comes. Rolls to his right, Mangum. Chucks it downfield again. This is Shumway to the 29. Just let it fly. Is that what you're talking about during That's the what break? I'm saying. Just let it go. 46 yards. Put the put the pressure on the back end, and you because right now you're in a position where it's like two-minute offense for the rest of the game if you have any chance, and you've got to try to stretch this defense out and make big plays. 29 yard line. Katoa. That's a 46 yard play. Longest pass play of the year for Mangum. Now Katoa in the backfield. He's got the pitch. Runs with a little more steam. Gets inside the 25. Down to the 24. Five yard run for Katoa. Squally Canada was such a difference maker in that win at Arizona and at Wisconsin. But we haven't seen him since he's the second been, quarter. He's been banged up, and, and he was banged up last week at, at Washington and, and ineffective because of, of the, the injuries. Simon in motion. And Mangum backs out. He's got Holker and Bushman in a tight end. Back to pass. Lobs it for Bushman. Flag comes out in the end zone. And another penalty on the Aggie defense. Bushman was well covered. But there was contact in the end zone. Defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's Aaron Wade. So when BYU's pushed the ball upfield and, and gone vertical with it, it's it's resulted in good things. It's either been penalties. On the Utah State defense under pressure, and you see the contact there long before the ball got there by Wade. Um, so either there have been penalties on the defense or they've completed big balls, and, and that's been the only way BYU's been able to move it in this game. Ten penalties on Utah State. You look at ten penalties to three, it just doesn't match up with the score. Now make him in the shotgun, first and goal at the nine-yard line. Tanner back to pass, throws to Shumway at the goal line. Well defended and incomplete. Ingram on the coverage. Shumway with just two catches on the year. When, when that, that slant route is coming, the ideal place is to, is to have it be low and away so low and down inside so the receiver can go down and get it away from the defender. When the ball gets up, the defender has a chance to make a play on it. Second and goal. Freshman Milne at the bottom of your screen. Tanner rolling to his right. Into the end zone. Colley! Touchdown! Dylan Colley's first touchdown as a BYU Cougar. Colley was here, transferred to Hawaii, earned his degree, had a year of eligibility, and came back. Good job by Mangum that time. Trying to read to his left. Coverage was there. Got away from the pass rush and bought extra time by, by getting out to the right and, and uh, making a play with his feet before he made a play with his arm. Good play by Tanner Mangum. Southam 
to attempt the extra point. And he hits the post. He's had an awful night. First miss on an extra point for Southam. On the season, he's missed two field goals in a row, and now he's shanked an extra point. It's 35 to 13 with 3.07 to go here in the third. Now the defense will need to do something it hasn't done in the half play, and that's stop Utah State. Yeah, that Utah State with two possessions, and they've just marched right down the field uh, with very little trouble at all and gotten it into the end zone twice. Well, South and for South and now a little bit of a confidence thing yeah. right now is, is he he pushed one to the right in the first half on a field goal attempt. Now this one he pulls to the left and hits the upright and doesn't get it through. Five plays and 75 yards a minute 48 and, and BYU just going vertical just going up top and that's what they need to do. You just wonder why they didn't go vertical soon. Matt Wells, eager to get his offense back out on the field. BYU will host Hawaii a week from tomorrow, 10-15 Eastern, 8-15 Mountain Time on ESPN2. Countdown to kickoff will start at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain here on BYU TV. Utah State's going to go home and host UNLV next Saturday. The Rebels were without their starting quarterback for a little while. And uh, this is a good time to catch UNLV in Logan. Mickelson will tee it up. And Bright is deep for Utah State. Like we called a game in Logan one year. I think BYU was down 35 to 7 at halftime and came back and won. Brett Engeman led yeah, the that charge. Was, that was the Brett Engeman. That was a crazy night. Gabe Reed, I think, got the winning touchdown. That was the halftime score back then. This is 35-13 late in the third. And Bright going to field it at the five. BYU still waiting for a gift from Utah State tonight. They've been turnover free. Bright goes down right at the 20. The Aggies come in flying high, fourth in the country, averaging 51 and a half points a game. They're on track to get that number at this pace. Up over 30. Now five straight games. Well, we, we talked about at the very beginning is is the easy schedule that they played over this last month. Did that bode well for them. They came out of it healthy with a ton of confidence and they just picked up right where they left off. I think the answer is yes. It's love under pressure throws it away. Or, or would BYU, because they're so battle tested in the first five games, but, but a little beat up. Yeah. Yeah. Squally Canada beat up. Zane Anderson's playing but beat up. Austin Lee beat up. Guy and Gawalku yeah. not playing. Gawalku not playing. is one of the best coverage guys in space. Uh, but would they be battle tested? And they just look a little lethargic. And of course, Utah State's had a two-week break to prepare for BYU. Two fifty six to go here in the third. Second and ten. Pressure comes again on Love. Throws it high and incomplete. Intended for his big tight end. And, and that's how you take away those inside underneath routes. You have to have linebackers play well in coverage and Sioni Taki Taki right underneath that throw to take that away. Third and ten. A week ago, this is when BYU could not get off the field against Washington on third down. We've seen Utah State on several occasions throw just a little underneath ball, make people miss or break tackles, and, and get out with first down yardage. They haven't been afraid to throw it shorter than those first down marks and, and count on their guys to make plays. And now they'll run it. And the Cougars are waiting for Thompson. A gain of six, and the punting unit will come on for Utah State. We haven't seen the punting unit for about an hour. And Taylor Heinze will be on to kick it, and Shelton is deep for BYU. The only problem with that drive for Utah State is 
two incompletes. The clock stops on both of those incompletes. So very little time off the clock, and now they give the ball back to a BYU team that, that just went down and scored. And this punt out of bounds. Not the best on the night for Heinze, and BYU is going to have relatively decent field position. Just a 37-yard kick, and they'll have the ball at the 38. Tuesday night, 7 Eastern, 5 Mountain Time, after further review. The best hour of BYU football on television because it's the only hour where we just break down one play after the other. What worked, what didn't tonight? We'll preview Hawaii. We'll see you Tuesday night at 7 Eastern here on BYU TV. 38-yard line. Mangum under center. Back to pass. A little screen pass. Dropped off to Katoa. And Lapini. Makes a little out of nothing, picks up three yards. Devon Anderson up to make the tackle. Utah State's done a nice job. BYU hasn't, BYU hasn't thrown a ton of screens, but when they have, Utah State's read it well, dropped off the pass rush, and gotten involved back in the screen. Defended very well right there. Good to see Hefo back in the game after it shaken up on that last possession. Second down and seven. There's Collie in motion. Milne has the first down. Spin to the outside. Up near the 49. Ingram pulls him down. Eight yards. Third and seven. Mangum, 217, over 6,000 now for his career. He's right behind Taysom Hill. And passing if, yards. And if you're BYU, you, you, you want to make sure you get things right. But you got to have a little bit of a sense of urgency right now. When you're down this much, if they could get a score here right at the end of the quarter or just as they go into the next quarter and get this thing down to 15 or 14 points, they have some momentum and they're in pretty good shape. But they can't just be so slow and methodical. Blitz comes. Mangum gets away from it and throws away. Ed Bushman wide open. But running for his life, chucks the ball out of bounds. And Bushman was open, but I think at that point, Mangum was just like, I got to avoid the loss here and get it out. It was a really good play just to avoid the sack and get it out and get back to the line of scrimmage and stop that clock. Unga providing the pressure. But Bushman's thinking, man, if he had another half a second, touchdown. nobody was on me back here. Second and ten. Four-man rush, here comes pressure, Mangum over the middle, Shumway, first down at the 34. Really nifty move by Tanner Mangum that time. There was an inside pass rush, and instead of bailing, he just stepped over to his right. Watch this little move, here comes the inside rush, he doesn't bail, he just steps over, resets himself in the pocket, and then throws it back. This was really good pocket presence by Tanner Mangum and a good throw. Thirty four yard line. Let it fly has been the theme of the second half. Much to the delight of Lane Fowler. Mangum lets it fly to the end zone. Incomplete. Tended for Shumway. Shumway became the defender on that one. Make sure DJ Williams can pick it off. If, if I had Shumway one on one out there, as big as he is, it's, a, it's the same thing as Ron Quavey and Tarver on the other side. Big guys that can go in jump balls. And if they're one on one, that's worth taking a shot. Put it in a position where only your guy can go get it. Six seconds to go here in the third. Second and ten. Let's come. Spanga in trouble. Fumbles the ball. Recovered by Utah State. John Trell Rockamore gets the sack, forces the turnover, and recovers the fumble. And that is how the third quarter will come to an end. He gets a forced fumble and a fumble recovery all on one play. 35-13, Utah State with the ball midfield as we take another look. No room for air down by so many, and another mistake for the BYU offense. 35-13 Aggies on BYU TV.
We talked about it all week. Turnovers determine these rivalry games. And in the last uh, seven quarters, BYU has turned the ball over ten times against these eggs. Yeah, you cannot win a football game minus three in turnover margin. And, and in that first half, especially, where it led directly to 14 points. And we'll see if this one leads to points as well. And BYU was in a position where they go down and score there right toward the close of the third with a bunch of momentum and, and go down by 14 or 15. All of a sudden, this is a ball game. And that is just a devastating turnover there in, on the fumble by Mangum. So right near midfield, the Aggies are back to work. We were talking about this Utah State offense where they've done their damage tonight is running the football so much said about their passing attack but they have uh, dominated on the ground. Meanwhile, BYU has 14 carries for 14 yards. Well, we talked about keys for Utah State. Hold BYU to under four yards of carry. Well, how about one yard of carry? Love winds up and throws deep. Out of bounds. One yard per carry. And on the other side of it, 27 rushing attempts and 179 yards for Utah State. It's a big time effort. A lot of it has been that cutback where they they start uh, to the left and bounce it back, and, and BYU hasn't been there on that backside edge in this football game. 37. Another well, quick drive by Utah State with the incompletions. BYU has been miserable on third downs, one for seven. That's not allowed them to continue drives. And three turnovers. Three of eight on third down for Utah State in this game. Love. Complete on third down to make it look easy. Green to the BYU 32. And another first down. Chris Wilcox on the tackle. 20 yards for Green. And typically, Utah State gets it out really quick. They needed more yards that time. A straight drop back. No pressure. Now it's Love again. Down the sideline. Barnes. He stepped out of the 15. And Matt Wells encouraging his offense to get back in a position and keep going. They're ready to deliver the knockout punch. He wants them to move, move, move while BYU is on their heels here. First down at the 15. Now they'll slow it up. Look back. in motion and this is bright He's running it will through the defense down to the nine yard line again six he thought BYU would be tougher up front in this matchup Tuiati Mariner on the tackle right back to bright Dragging players inside the five. It'll be first and goal. Giotti, Mariner again. Another six-yard run. It's a good veteran group, as you mentioned, that left side. Bunch of return missionary guys that have been around a long time for Utah State on that offensive line. Back to Bright. He waits and then continues. He can't get across. But he gets close. and It'll be second down. Peely putting up a fight there at the goal line. What do you think is going on down there in the trenches in this rivalry where BYU is just being pushed around by these guys? Four seniors creating scenes. These are good backs, too. They're small. You can't find them. Then all of a sudden, they, they pop out, and, and BYU finally brings some pressure from the edge, and they're able to have a free player come through and make a play in Isaiah Kafusi. Third down and goal. Nice stick by... Kafusi on Cottonwood Heights, Brighton High School. That's third and two. Fun to you, so I'm glad these Aggies aren't on the schedule. Yeah, exactly. This year, as good as they are, they are and are going to be if they stay healthy on offense. Michigan State beat them, just managed to outscore them 38 31. On the keeper, touchdown, Jordan Love. 41 to 13. So another turnover 
cast in for a touchdown. 21 points on turnovers tonight. Last year in Logan, they scored 26 points off BYU turnovers. And neither game's close. A little celebration penalty on the Aggies. The result of the play is a touchdown. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 10, offense. 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Love uh, Sharon, too much love after that run. And, and, and a good read here. Pull, pulls the, the football away. Oh, and he, and he, and he tells the crowd. I don't know. I don't know if I would throw a penalty. I don't know if I would have either. <laughs> Everly. Plus, the crowd's so quiet, he really doesn't have to. He didn't have to tell him. 12.03 to go. I will say this, though. You're playing too good of a game. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to say anything and just be quiet. Your play speaks for itself. Too many turnovers for BYU. You can say the Cougars lost the game on this turnover in the first quarter. It's fourth and one, Blaine. They opt to pass it. That's returned for a touchdown. Then Hawker fumbles it. That turns into this. Into the third quarter, Mangum fumbles it. And that turns into this. 21 points off three turnovers. And that will absolutely kill you. So, so a pick six, which is zero yards of offense and you give up seven points then they give them the ball at, at the 50 yard line on that last one and at the 45 yard line on the one before so two half fields and no field at all to 21 points that's that's how you get way behind in a game that's how you lose momentum and that's how you lose football games. and as conservative as BYU has been in offensive play calling you go back to that fourth and one early in the game against Cal when Squally Canada is on the sideline, Bo Hodge gets stuck, doesn't make the first down, Cal goes down, scores, game changes. Then you go back to that fourth and one, you don't run the football, you try a pass, Mangum's picked off. It's almost like, here's Hefo, slicing up to the 35. But Blaine, those two plays in those two home defeats were huge, and they were early in the game. Yeah, early in the game, and it just are game-changing plays early in the game. Let's go down onto the field, and Lauren. Aggie senior linebacker Soli Tama Ivena said that head coach Matt Wells put a huge emphasis with the team on turnovers this week. He said he mentioned to the team that in the last six years, whoever won the turnover margins won the game. And Tama Ivena said getting after the ball, getting turnovers, will be a huge emphasis in tonight's game. It was in practice, and it's obviously paying off. Dave. Thanks, Ron. It'll be seven and zero in games after bye weeks. Manga back to pass. Under pressure, finds Milne for a short gain of five. Now the Cougars will go without a huddle. And it's, it's well, it's been two-minute offense, but now really hurry up. Two-minute offense every time they have the football for the rest of the game, obviously. Second and five. Shumway, first down. Drags a few Aggies out near midfield. Shumway at a Lone Peak High School. Shumway having a breakout game in this one. Where he's been targeted more than we've seen to this point of the season. Making some good plays. Big physical wide receiver. Gain of 11. Utah State's a key play or two from being undefeated on the season. They have Michigan State up against the ropes in that season opener in August. Now Manga under pressure, downfield to Colley. Out of bounds. The, the momentum of Mangum's body rolling forced that ball to, to carry a little bit further to the right than he wanted to. And, and Colley made a good catch on it. There was no way for him to be able to to catch that and stay in bounds. Let's take a look. Fischel went down, then Collie went down, out of bounds. A lot of rain dropped on this field last night. It's held up pretty good, but you see a little slipping. Saw that official take a spill on the sideline. Second down and 10. Katoa 
Little room in front of him, but it closes. Ball comes out. BYU jumps on it. Gain of four. I think they ruled him down anyway. Shaq Bond on the hit. So no fumble. Utah State's done a very solid job of defending those screens against BYU. First time we saw those screens really was last week against Washington. Perhaps we were watching after further review when we broke those down. Because they have not been surprised. Here comes a blitz. Mangum spins away. Downfield almost picked off. Intended for Holker. That'll bring up fourth down. DJ Williams. Thought he had a shot at it. BYU will go for it. As we arrive near 10 minutes here in this fourth quarter. These teams are scheduled to play for the next four years. Next year it's November 2nd in Logan. Long John night. And then the following three years are general conference weekends where this series really belongs. Fourth down. Here comes the blitz. Incomplete. No chance. Mangum got hit. He's asking for some help. He's not going to get it tonight. Aggies take over possession right near midfield. On those kinds of plays, when the blitz is coming, you have to be able to get loose, make a move, and be able to get to the inside and get open for a first down. BYU football on BYU TV is brought to you by Brady Industries, honestly better. Deseret First Credit Union, your values, your timeline, your financial future. Tim Daly Nissan, Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. And by Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward. Chilly but beautiful night here in Provo. It's the first time the Aggies have been to town since the passing of legendary Lavelle Edwards. Lavelle was a three-year letterman for Utah State from 1949 to 1951, and he's a member of the Aggies Hall of Fame, a beloved figure around here as well. BYU's all-time winningest coach, college football Hall of Famer, wonderful man, passing away in December of 2016. And we are in his stadium tonight. Dave McCann, Blaine Fowler. And Lauren McLean, our BYU TV crew, 42 to 13, Utah State. Jordan Love continues to work. Hands it over to Thompson. Thompson leapfrogging. That's the second time he's hopped over a defender tonight. It's amazing, Blaine, how when you have the lead, it just re-energizes you. These these Aggies been running around all night. And they look as fresh as can be. And, and Thompson's not a big guy. He's, he's compact. He's 5'8", 200. You don't dive at his ankles. You take him on, and you bring your hips, and you wrap him up. And uh, if, you, if you dive at his ankles, he's going to step through those tackles, or he's going to jump over the top of you. Second down. Need a yard. Here's Thompson. They will get around the corner at will. He's still there inside the 35 down to the 34. All right, Blaine, here's what BYU fans are wondering as they watch this. And many have left already here in the stadium. And what in the world do they do now? Well, the University of Hawaii comes in here and they spread you out. And Utah State's really, we mentioned it a little bit ago, they've hurt BYU in the run game. Hawaii's going to throw it all over the place. A completely different challenge next week. And, and BYU's going to have to figure out how to generate more offense and more points than 13 and take care of the football. 217 to 14 is the difference in rushing yards. That is amazing. And Kofusi wrapping him up for a tackle. Gain of a yard. Tanner Mangum, you know, that we came into this game thinking BYU needed to run the football average between five and five and a half yards a carry. And, they can't run the ball at all tonight. Tanner Mangum with 42 pass attempts. He's 26 of 42 for 254. That, that's a lot. That's not what's been characteristic of this offense this season. And it's the turnovers that have just killed BYU. 
in this ball game. Fans also wonder, well, how can you run the football at Wisconsin and not run the football at home against Utah State? The debate continues with, with folks who go, well, you know what? What the last couple of weeks have told us is Wisconsin was a legitimate upset as opposed to uh, the, well, the kind was, of program Wisconsin, turning win. Wisconsin came in, and they said, we're going to respect BYU. They're going to come in. They're going to be balanced. We're going to play straight up defense. We're going to defend the pass. Utah State came in this game in the first half and said, we don't, we don't think you're even going to throw it. So we're going to stop the run, and until BYU started to throw it, they, they didn't move the ball, and then they've been short-circuited by their own own problems with with, uh, with turnovers. But, but Wisconsin played BYU straight up. They respected that they might throw the football, and that allowed yeah. BYU to run the football. And, uh, and, and until BYU can consistently throw it and take care of the football, teams are going to say, well, you stop them from running, and that's a formula for success. Now, they did. BYU did look much better throwing the football here in the second half, but they still haven't been able to capitalize on their ability to move the ball with points on the board. Dominic Eberle is going to come in. He's eight for eight on the season. Number one in the NCAA. This is going to be about a 47-yard kick. He hit a 51-yarder against New Mexico State. Junior out of Nuremberg, Germany. Can he stay perfect on the year? On its way... And he's nine for nine. That was plenty of legs. What a weapon. 45 to 13. 6.51 to go. Most points allowed by BYU since Toledo came in, scored 53 in 2016. Cougars won that game. They're down 45-13 in this one. Countdown to kickoff a week from tomorrow night as Hawaii comes to town. Two old whack rivals getting back together. We'll count you down to kickoff. The game's on ESPN2 at 8.15 local time. That'll be a true test of fan loyalty. Well, and Hawaii, uh, another team with all kinds of offense. A little, little different. They're, they're throwing a lot around a little more. Of course, Utah State has been more heavily weighted toward throwing the football, but not in this game. When you can rush for 220-plus yards, you don't need to throw it that much. Right. BYU is 2-4 and four at home last season. They're going to slip to 1-2 and two at home this season. A point of concern for head coach Kalani Sataki. Aggie Band made the drive down from Logan. They've been pretty happy tonight. So does Utah State deserve some votes in the top 25? To go on the road and hang with Michigan State. Right. They, they blow BYU out. And I know that the three games in between they haven't been, but they've been killing people. And uh, do they deserve to, to have some consideration in the top 25? I think they probably have to still be flying high and beat Boise State, don't you? Yeah. But the Mountain West just isn't going to get much respect with the exception of Boise. There's Hufo, loses his foot and he's down in front of the 15-yard line. It seems like that they'll have to do that. Their one shot at glory was Michigan State. When you're in the Mountain West, you really get one or two Saturdays a year. We know that. Right. To make a difference. And, and uh, you beat Oklahoma, then you're on the radar the rest of the year, like, like BYU's done back in the day. You beat Wisconsin, you get in the top 20, or top 25. Then they beat McNeese, moved, moved up to number 20. And then they've been hammered in consecutive weeks. Look at, and look at those rushing yards. Mm. And the wins versus the losses. And this is this is 14 yards is just unbelievable. Mango winds up. Throws it out to the 29. And Shumway with another catch. Game of 16. Tanner, pressure coming from behind. Bishman had it and lost it. Well defended by Utah State. David Woodward 
Uh, and that, that's a really good job of getting his hands in there and separating the ball from Matt Bushman's hands by Woodward. Well defended. I think one thing we've seen here tonight, too, is that BYU does not believe Zach Wilson is ready. Because when you're behind by so much, you literally have nothing to lose. But it's been Tanner the whole way, which gives you the, the opinion that it's just going to be Tanner the whole way. Come what? This is Collie. Dropped it. Had it and dropped it. And it'll be third down and ten. There's Zach Wilson, outstanding freshman out of Corner Canyon High School, but he's he's as freshman as a freshman is. <laughs> Although he finished high school early, so he could be at BYU, went through spring drills, and uh, and pushed Mangum in that battle for the starting job. He's got Bo Hodge next to Wilson Hodge was a quarterback for a while, and they moved him to running back. Uh, and with and with the the new rules about redshirting, you can you can get playing time in, in up to four games and still qualify to redshirt. If it's a blitz, incomplete on the screen to Katoa. Not much in front of him. Now it's fourth down and ten. If you can complete that ball against the blitz, it's actually a good call. Because all you got to do is get that ball there, and then there's nobody on the other side of the defense. They're all involved in the blitz. That becomes a big, big play, but you got to be able to get it off. And now BYU is going to punt the football away. There's Nathan. Jones grabs his helmet and mouthpiece. This is the chin strap snap there, and ready to take a shot. Into the crowd. Fair caught at the 36. 6.03 to play. 35 yard punt is all for BYU two. hasn't really done anything well in this game. Haven't punted the ball well. They haven't kicked the ball well. They, they've struggled in every aspect of the game. Forty-five thirteen, Utah State. Take a look at what's ahead for the Aggies. UNLV, Wyoming, New Mexico, Hawaii, and San Jose. Those are five straight victories. Maybe Wyoming over in Laramie can give them some trouble, but nobody else in that lineup. And for BYU, I think what we've seen tonight, Blaine, is that they're going to have a hard time getting bowl eligible. You got you think New Mexico State is just awful. A legitimate shot there. They got Utah at the end of the season. They still. Have, Boise State, but Northern Illinois is Northern tough. Illinois is a very good, very good program. Hawaii's feeling very confident offensively right now. Now, why in the world is Jordan Love still in this football game? It's a good question, and uh, we were just talking about it at the break. When we said, did they leave Jordan Love in there? And when you got a game well in hand, and you got a guy as valuable as he is, you you just want to get him out of there and put him on ice until next week when he can go out and win another one for you. Think about the, uh, he, he's won this one for you. You go back a few years back when Taysom blew out his knee at the end of the game, just running the clock out instead of putting a knee, ran a play. I mean, it can happen that fast. We'll hope that doesn't happen tonight. Second down and seven. And maybe they feel like, you know what? I'm not going to have him throw the ball around. We're just going to have him hand it off for the rest of this game, and that keeps him out of harm's way. Here's Allen to the outside. Across the 40, 41. Al Toro Allen with the carry tackle. Well, you look at the score and you see BYU with 13 points. New Mexico State scored 13 points against Utah State, and Tennessee Tech scored 12. And they were on the road in Logan, and BYU sitting at 13. And you just kind of threw a look up there, going, "Is that right?" And Utah State just. Work in the clock as much as possible with the run game. Third down and five. Love gonna throw it. It'll be short of the first down as Carson Terrell gain a three and the punting unit will come on. Zane Anderson up to the tackle. 
Psychologically, where does this defense go? Because this is arguably their worst night we've seen well, it's, in a long time. It's, it's absolutely the worst night they've had this season. They've held their own much, much better uh, in, in every game this season. This is one where they just have not had an answer. And surprisingly against the run game right. of Utah State. So they got to go back to the drawing board and, and be fundamentally more sound. And, I, I felt like they weren't physical enough on the edges against Washington, but the Washington's big physical top 10 football team, and, and I think that was a problem again to, uh, in, in this game. Here's Shelton. Cut down at the 22. 41-yard punt. And with 3.46 to go, we'll see the BYU offense take the field again. Zach Wilson's going to come in. He'll enter the game here late in the fourth, down 45 to 13. And to your point, you're going to give him some experience, and if you're only playing four games with seven opportunity to redshirt, do not get him in a series earlier than this. Right. Um, and, and just give him a little bit more experience. Every bit of experience for him is good for the future of BYU. Gets to play in four games without and still able to redshirt out of the backfield and a first down matt bushman 13 yards so you get to play in four games and then you can still redshirt he's played in one this would be number two but but three three and a half minutes in number two well, I, I think you're right i like to see him the whole the, fourth the, quarter the good news is they're giving him an opportunity to get in the gun and throw the football here in two minute type offense and we watched him during fall camp man his his mechanics are a beautiful thing. Like, he really has great throwing mechanics and good feet. Uh, can get a lot of velocity on the football. Oscar in the point. Still first down. The Costa Cougars five on the early movement. So what do you like about Zach's game? You're in fall camp just about every day. I just, he, just continue he, that thought. He throws the ball with a lot of confidence, a lot of velocity, very accurate. Uh, and he's not afraid to get it out. He gets it out on time. The only thing is he's young, and, and so he doesn't make great decisions every time, but also you see some athleticism here from him. Wilson dives down to the 42. Brings a yell out of the fans that are left. 26-yard run for Zach Wilson. Really good athlete with a live, live arm. Yeah, the Cougars get up in position. They wait for the chains to get reset. Zach looks over the defense. Here comes a blitz. Wilson throws it to Milne, and Milne drops it. Would have had a first down. And that's a throw on the money in a perfect spot that has to be caught. So many drops. They, they, drops have been a bit of a problem all season long yeah. for BYU. And Milne comes out of the game. Cougars were much more disciplined in the earlier part of the season than we've seen in the last couple of weeks. Wilson lobs it downfield for Shumway. Flag should come out, and there it is. Deontay Fortenberry with the penalty, trying to deal with Shumway downfield. Best offense for BYU all game long has been just go vertical, throw it up. Pass interference, number 27, defense. DBs will panic. Penalty. Automatic first down. Yeah, they'll panic, they'll hold you, or they'll tackle you. <laughs> and, and this has been BYU's best offense. Look at that. There's the hug. And when, that, when that receiver starts to slow up and gather, then you have to gather, get into the receiver, and turn around and play the football. Zach again. Throws it behind Shumway. And there's the catch of the night. I'm telling you what, Shumway, we've been waiting for a breakout game for Talent Shumway, and this is, and if there's any bright spot in this game, it's it's the play of 21 in this ballgame. He has been yes. really good. Back shoulder throw. Wow. That is a catch. Talent Shumway with a busy night. Five catches for 110 yards. Now first and goal, BYU. Another blitz comes. Zach tries to run through it, can't do it. To Utah State's credit, 
They're blitzing. Oh, yeah. They're coming after they're not you. Playing, they're not playing prevent. They're no. playing their, their normal base defense and, and bringing a variety of blitzes and coming after the young guy. It's a good education for Zach because they'll be back together up in Logan November 2nd of next year. Second down and goal. Another blitz. Pump. Gets out of it. Rolls out. Flag comes down. Zach's still moving. And he gets out of bounds. Might have been a late hit there. That's what the crowd is arguing for. I think there's going to be a hold over in the original area. I, I, I agree with the hold, and I would have thrown a flag right there for hitting him when he was getting out of bounds. Holding. Number four. Offense. Ten-yard penalty. Replay second down. And, 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 and watch this. So so now he's surrendered himself. Guess what? That That is a penalty. Absolutely a penalty. And that's... That's the kind of play that, kid, that the kids get hurt on. Right. Hitting him low, he was clearly out of bounds. That should have been a penalty and they should offset. I hate seeing plays that are high-risk injury plays. Don't like them. Second and goal now from the 18. A couple of runs on scrambles for Wilson. Another blitz comes. Quick release. This is Romney. Inside the five to the goal line. Touchdown! First touchdown for freshman Gunnar Romney. And a touchdown pass for freshman Zach Wilson. You see the velocity he, he has on the football. I mean, watch his throwing motion. It's just so easy. Just effortless throwing motion. As I watched him in fall camp, I... I noticed how easy he throws the football and how natural it is for him. Southam really needs this extra point. And he knocks it in. And it's 45 to 20. Last year it was 40 to 26. Check that Mickelson on the extra point, not Southam. Ed Lamb and the special teams group send Mickelson in there to kick it. And with 1.14 to go, you try an onside kick just because you can? Oh, I would. Yeah. Why not, right? Why not? Nice drive by Wilson, helped out by another defensive penalty, but uh, it, you guess, at least get a little glimpse of yeah, what he of, of, of the future. And, and uh, you know, the primary reason after fall camp to go with Tanner Mangum was because they just felt like with the experience, he'd do a better job of taking care of the ball. And in some of these big games, Tanner's been great. Like, right. even last week in a loss, he really took care of the football. Did a great job at Wisconsin. But but in this football game, they haven't taken care of the football. You know, and and a, a, an interception for a pick six, a fumble, and then on a third and 20, they throw a ball at the line of scrimmage to a tight end. They turn the ball over, and they give him short field on that one. Just, just too, too many mistakes for BYU, especially early, to hang in this one. This is Southam as the Cougars are trying onside kick. Flag comes down. BYU may have been offsides. When they tried this onside kick against Cal, it was kind of the same thing. Just the right hop right to the guy. Offside. Number 90 on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty will be added on to the spot of the recovery. First down. Aggies will improve to four and one. BYU will drop to three and three. And the Cougars are trending in the wrong direction. They got a few days to turn this around before Hawaii comes in. And Hawaii's got to look at this uh, and go, okay, maybe we should cover an, an opportunity. And then, yeah. And how how do we run the football against this team? Because yeah. that's what Utah State did to be successful. They ran the ball. Enormous win for Matt Wells. Get his career win number 38. And Love stays in the quarterback. Well, I think they're just, I think they're just gonna kneel on it. And so that's okay. That's okay for him to go out and do that. If they're gonna run regular plays with him and we'll get him out of the game and protect him. He is too valuable, but for victory formation, he's perfectly capable of doing that without getting hurt.
Love 165 yards passing and four touchdowns. Last week or two weeks ago he threw for 356 in a shootout with Air Force but no shootout tonight in that running game and BYU's lack of running game has made this a one sided game for the second year in a row. Be careful, be careful. And the Aggies will win back to back in this series for the first time since 1973 and 74. And they're going to face Jordan Love next year in Logan. Boy, he is spectacular this season. And it really has been these last two years a complete tale of turnovers. Um, and, and as Matt Wells told his team in preparation these last couple yeah. weeks, the team that wins the turnover battle wins the football game typically. And he was right on that one for certain. And the old wagon wheel will stay in possession of Utah State, deservedly so, as they have come into Provo. And they have blown out BYU 45 to 20. And now the rebuild will continue for Coach Sataki and his staff. Two steps forward after a giant, two steps backwards after a giant step forward with that win at Wisconsin and now back-to-back -back blowouts to Washington and Utah State. We'll break it all down Tuesday night. Final score, 45-20, Aggies. For Lauren McLean, Blaine Fowler, our entire crew, I'm Dave McCann. We say so long from Lavelle Edwards Stadium on BYU TV.